social channels as well. And a warm welcome. We don't often say that here at Prenton Park, but it's dry for now and it's not too bad. Paul McHugh is here, uh, the uh, former assistant manager of Liverpool Women and long-time trusted right-hand man of Matt Beard and Red's record goal scorer. And Natasha Dowie is in our company as ever as well. Uh, Maka, welcome back. Thank is you. it strange? Is it good to be back? It's good to be back. It's strange, but it's great to see the players out on the pitch and getting warmed up. So I'm, I'm really pleased I'm here. Strange not to have the tracksuit on, though, and oh, helping them and talking them through it all, I imagine. like going to kick a ball at times, but <laughs> I better not. Yeah, <laughs> not for now. Um, Tash, it's, it's a good mood. You can tell with the girls warming up at the moment, they're in, you know, festive spirit. They want to get the three points under their belt again today, and they're playing well as well. They're playing very well, I think. Look, fifth in the table right now, between behind the top four. The form at home is unbelievable. We love playing at Prenton, and, and they're playing great football. And I think the last result, 4-0, clean sheet. You know, people are performing. And Matt Beard now has headaches, but really good headaches. Mm. Came on really strong in that second half, didn't they? Yeah, they did. You know, the, the subs have had a massive impact of late. You know, your Leanne Kiernans that come on, they've got pace to burn. So you've got someone like Vanish Van der Sanden who starts with pace. Take her off. You've got Leanne Kiernan that can come on with pace. You know, Mia Rendevi, there's so much threat now going forward. But also that back five, I think, for me, plus the goalkeeper, have been so defensively strong this season. Mm. Uh, you know what this is all about, where the opposition are concerned, Paul, in the yeah. sense that they're newly promoted they've found life a little bit of a struggle in the top flight yeah I think I think I've been through it with Liverpool and it's hard it's hard to come up from the championship to get into the Super League because it's a different level but hopefully they'll get together and start I mean they've, they've conceded a few in the first half of the season so now it's it's piped down a little bit so they just have to get that structure and try to come out of it mm. is that a culture sometimes as well as when you come up obviously you know teams will play very differently against you you're no longer the big fish you have to survive and get results yeah. pick points up sometimes where you can yeah, i think it's been organized i think getting together as a group for the players as well as the staff and saying right what do we need to do what do we do out of possession? But what do we do when we've got the pos you know in possession? Mm. So it's really getting the understanding right to cope with what's going on and its reactions. It's a speed of things, which is is quick up here. Yeah, yeah. really is. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, the team that Matt Beard has gone with uh, for this one today. And when things are going well, Tash, it's quite a simple selection, isn't it? Same team as last week. Yeah, it is. You know, a clean sheet last week, four goals. So I'm no surprise to see no changes today. But I think there will be changes. And like I said, the bench is so strong now. So strong that actually some players aren't even making the bench. Players are in the stands now. So I think it is hard for them. But it's also great that there is that competition for places. And if you don't perform, then you don't play. And credit to the girls. Everyone's been doing their jobs. And I'm really excited to watch them today. Yeah, he's, he's got a very simple decision when things are going well, though. Yeah. And that you just carry on and, and, and same yeah, as last yeah. week. Yeah, and I, you know, I... What Tats is saying, it's, it's really important, but it's now getting an understanding of, right, how do I get in that first 11? And if if you've got to do everything you can to get there, well, you can, you've got to keep knocking on that door. Mm. Really strong squad at the moment, and uh, a manager that is fairly satisfied with how his team have been playing as well. Uh, he's been catching up with Steve Hunter. Beardy, final home game of the calendar year. Yeah, no, it's uh, 2023 has been good to us. Prenton Park has been good to us. Um, so hopefully we can um, finish off today with three points for the fans and um, two tough games after that. But obviously we've got a tough game this afternoon. So fingers crossed that we can uh, put performance on and get the three points. And I guess from a manager's point of view, after the great win at, over Brighton, it's nice to name an unchanged team. Yeah, it is. Obviously it's been uh, it, was a, it was a great win before the international break and uh, everyone's come back. Um, fit and healthy, which is, which is great. So, uh, yeah, no, we're looking forward to playing today. I guess that's a mad thing for a manager, especially for you, after these international breaks, which are very frequent in the women's game. you just got to keep everything crossed, haven't you? You, only, you basically only get two training days before this game, don't you? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I think we had six games in 22 days and then we've got three games in seven days. You know, in between them, you've, there's been four international games as well. So international players have played a lot of football in the last sort of two months or so. Um, but yeah, as I say, let's part and parcel with the game. Um, we've had two good sessions in preparation for today, so fingers crossed that we can, uh, as I said before, we can put on a performance today and, and, and get three points. And Gemma Bonner was awarded the Standard Charter Player of the Month for November on, on Friday. I mean, she's been superb since you brought her back. No, no, she has, and I mean, what a month for her as well, breaking the record and uh, having her family here before the Brighton game to celebrate that. 
Um, but listen, thoroughly deserved. I think if you look at her performances with and without the ball, um, her bravery have been fantastic. What about the challenge then of uh, your former club, Bristol City? That, I mean, despite their position at the bottom of the league, that, that defies. They're quite a decent team. They're tough, tough not to crack, aren't they? Yeah, no, they are. They've um, they had a tough start, um, and I think they found their feet now. Um, dangerous on the counter attack, very organised defensively. Um, but listen, we've got a lot of players in our team that can that, that can hurt teams, and as I say, we've got the strength and depth on the bench as well. If we need to change it, we've got the ability to do that. Um, but no, we know it's going to be a tough game. They're dangerous set players, counter attacks. So we've got to be mindful of that. Is the word patience a key word for today's game? I think so. I know, you know, when you when you get in advanced positions, you know, if there's if we're def up against nine, it'd be defending the box, which it will be at times. You know, sometimes you might have to go back round to try and open them up a little bit and create them gaps. But um, but yeah, no, look, it's, it's it's one of them things. I think if you look at how the Brighton game panned out, you know, we were patient, we kept the ball well, and then we hit them on the counter when when they was expansive and, you know. Brighton repressing us with six. Bristol City won't do that today. Um, so it'll be a different, a different game for us and a different problem to solve. Thanks as always, Beardy. Good luck today. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah, well, it's often a different kind of problem for any manager when the squad is fully fit. You're trying to keep all of the players happy, and well, he had to make a decision over the goalkeeper yeah. last time out. A goalkeeper that served him very well in, in Rachel Laws, a sign that he brought in in the summer. Um, Tiga Mika comes in. It, it was a big yeah. decision, that though. Yeah, it was a massive decision, and, and truthfully, I'm not too sure Rachel Laws did much wrong to get dropped. But credit to Tegan when she did come in, clean sheet. You know, had a, a strong enough game against Man United as well in the Conti Cup. Look, players aren't going to be happy, you know, but that's football, you know. There's only one spot as a keeper and Rachel Laws, I know her well enough that she's going to be the ultimate professional and she will be doing everything she possibly can to get that number one shirt back, but what a great problem to have two such strong keepers within your squad. Talk us through that then, Maki, you'd have been part of that in the summer, that discussion to bring in a, a top-class goalkeeper to challenge her. Yeah, it wasn't just a goalkeeper, that was other outfield players as well, but what we do is we'll look at data, we'll look at clips of each player um, in different teams you know when the when they're playing what what's the ambition what are they looking for to stay into the in the squad but also getting a uh, position in the team mm. from the goalkeeper but from all the players I think I think everyone's knocking on the door now so the have to their game has to be consistent and it has to be at top level uh, we're seeing some of the action from uh, from last week what you want as a manager when you make a big decision like that is for the the player you bring in to play well and she certainly did that yeah absolutely and look, there would have been pressure on her because she knows like I said earlier what a good keeper Rachel Laws is so for her her to come in, you know, and to get her first start, and she pulled off some great saves, some big, big saves to keep Liverpool in the game. And look, I played with Tegan in Australia for Melbourne Victory, and she's a very confident player. You know, she's not short of confidence, and I think that's important as a keeper. You have to believe in your own ability. She obviously got international caps just recently um, with Australia. I mean, she'll want to be getting that number one spot as well now that their keeper's injured at West Ham at the moment. So she's got aspirations, and um, it's going to be a great battle now to see who can keep that shirt. Uh, the number nine shirt or that number nine position has been an interesting one as well. With Sophie Roman Hall moving in there, it's you know a new division for her to to adapt to. But also the goals that they missed in, in Katie Stengel, they were always going to be big boots to fill them. Huge boots. I think Katie Stengel was magnificent last year. The the goals that she created, she created on her own. And credit to Sophie Hall. You know she's come in. There was a lot of talk, quite a big price tag, which automatically puts pressure on as you. And when you're wearing the number nine shirt, you know obviously or as a striker for Liverpool, you have to score goals. But but credit to her, she wasn't scoring, but she didn't let her head drop. Matt Beard as well showed a lot of faith in her and keeps playing her. She obviously had the two assists last game and a goal, so obviously up for player of the month. So she'll be full of confidence now, and that's what you need as a striker, just to get your first goal, you know, a couple of assists, and now I think she'll be full of confidence. She's a regular international at Norway, so she's got so much experience, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing her developing more in that role. She's adapted so well. You were talking about data before as well, Mac. I'm just looking yeah. at them uh, here, six appearance has been involved in four of Liverpool's last six yeah. doing all of, all of the right things yeah I just think as well it's it's interesting because when you're looking at that clip Shanice has made a great forward run to create that chance for the goal and if it wasn't for that run there wouldn't be nowhere near that for me so being positive and thinking play forward think forward and play forward and it just makes a massive difference because it opens things up
Shanice playing in that position? Do you like her there? She, she's obviously adaptable. Yeah, she is. And I think the nice thing about Shanice and Sophie is that Shanice can drift out wide into those wide positions that she likes to play. She's quick. Mm. You know, her end product, in my opinion, I think can still be developed. You know, she scored a couple of goals, but I think she probably should have had a few more. And she's admitted that. But Sophie is one of those strikers. She's a fox in the box. You know, so she's very strong in the air. Get the balls out wide to Shanice. Then we're getting good deliveries into box. Obviously, the goal against Tottenham was with her head. So I think they complement each other really well, actually. And Marie Hobinger, who's another summer recruit who, who, again, has just drifted into this team like she's always been there. I was just going to say the same. She's fitted in like a glove, but she's not she's not a big talker, communicator, but what she does on the ball and away from the ball, getting in positions to receive it or to play that pass, and the disguise that she puts in it is unreal. I mean, it's really exciting watching her. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think as a striker, I would have loved to have played with someone like her yeah. because she's a clever player. Matt Be Beard has even you know, used Farrah Williams. So straight away to even have that kind of comparison, you know, it's a huge confidence booster for her because Farrah Williams, for me, was one of the best players to ever play for Liverpool and England in women's football. But, you know, she's one of those attacking midfield players that her timing into the box is brilliant. And a lot of her goals, the West Ham goal and that goal there that you just see, it's her timing, her late runs into the box. But she's also, you know, created so many chances. Chances. And probably, actually, we should have scored a lot more from the chances she's created. Uh, there's only Katie Zellam, who's, of course, a former player here at uh, Liverpool as well, who's created more than her in the WSL and, of course, on the fringes of that England starting eleven now as well. Uh, been quite a November, uh, just gone for Gemma Bonner as well, breaking records, scoring goals, and now she's been voted by the fans as the standard chartered player of the month. I'm delighted to get the award. Thank you to the fans. Obviously, they've been incredible for us throughout the season. Their support, um, the home games and the away games, it definitely plays a huge part in how we feel as players. Because this award, as you say, is voted for by the fans, it probably makes it that mo bit more special, I guess. Yeah, it does. I mean, since I've been here right from the beginning, they've supported me, um, and ever since I was away from here too. So for me, I've always been grateful for their support, um, and I know how much it means for the girls to have such a credible support, both home and away, behind us all the time. November was certainly a very special month for you, and, and let's start at the top. You know, you became the club's all-time record appearance holder in the WSL era. Yeah, I mean, it's an extremely um, proud achievement that I've probably won't realise what I've done now until maybe I look back on in a few years. Um, for the moment now, I'm feeling good and I'm wanting to get as many games as I can under my belt. Um, I, like I say, I'm feeling good at the moment. Um, there's a great feel around the place, obviously being back here at Melwood, um, going out and putting the performances that we are doing as a team, we're picking up a lot of points and we're probably exceeding a few people's expectations so far this year. So for me, it's about keep working hard every single day um, and keep being the best I can be. I know I've still got a lot more to go. And I know you you love keeping clean sheets. That's your main job to shut out the opposition. But you also became a, a bit of a mini goal machine in the month. Goals from corners against Manchester City and Brighton. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's my job to keep the ball out of the back of the net. But I also know I can pose a threat in the opposition box. I'm just delighted that I can help the team. Um, but I definitely think it's a strength of the team with the quality of the deliveries we've got coming into the box. It's up to the players in the box to finish them. Yeah, another Liverpool record breaker that's part of our TV team here as well uh, on LFC TV. And she's the player of the month and well deserved for the all action hero. Oh, absolutely. I think she's been the standout player for Liverpool. And I'm just made up for Gemma. You know, she's my closest friend in the team. But. She deserves it because of what she does. You know, she's the ultimate professional. You know, she's always the first at training, always the last off training. But not just focusing on herself. She always wants to make the players around her better. You know, there's no coincidence why Jenna Clark has had such a good start, you know, coming from Scotland to this league. It's because of Gemma Bonner. That experience playing alongside her, helping her, you know, even the likes of Marie Hobinger. You know, I guarantee Gemma Bonner is talking her through her game from behind her. And, you know, she's my captain, you know, and she's going to have many more great years at this Liverpool club. And, yeah, more, more appearances for her for sure. Liverpool are lucky to have her Maka. She, she's obviously played all over the place she was always yearning to come back here eventually but to have her and playing as well as she is is a, yeah, is a massive thing. Yeah I she by example yeah. on the pitch on training like Tax is saying but the communication to help other players is massive. It helps them read the game, see the situation but moving across together 
and it's, it's vital in, in, in possession and out of possession communication's key for me always has been and that danger from set plays as well we saw an example of it there we talked about Marie just before the fact that she's popping up at the other end getting goals yeah she was winding me up when I saw her the other day saying she's coming for my goal <laughs> for my goal scoring record I said I'm not, not too worried about that Bonner but no she is she's great she's a real threat in the air and we've got so many players now like that on set pieces with obviously Marie Herbinger's delivery the likes of Jenna Clark Gemma Bonner we've got some big height in the team yeah phenomenal player for me and when, when Mac was talking about playing out from the back she is key in that Matt Beard wants this team now to play attractive football through the thirds and when Gemma Bonner doesn't play you notice that because in my opinion she's the best passer of the ball in that back line well, why does he like that system in particular with the flying fullbacks and the three centre backs I think it just fits fits what, what how he wants to play as a team but it's the case of as the ball moves across the pitch the people on the opposite side, the players on the opposite side, have to react to that. They can't just be a spectator. They have to move across and they have to move across together. If they're out of possession, you don't want players playing through you, around you. So the communication that we're seeing with Gemma already, it's a massive thing. But then in possession, it's that transition. How are you going to get to where you need to get in, to get the ball and make sure you're getting forward and getting ultimately that, that goal at the end? Uh, just briefly, first clean sheet and eight against Brighton. He'd be desperate for another one today. Absolutely. I think that Brighton game was key. You know, going into that game, we'd only had one win in eight. You know, obviously struggling in the cup a bit. But I think that performance now, hopefully, will then really kick us on. And, you know, we're right in there. You know, and defensively, I think the back five really suits us. When I've seen us play the back four, I think then there's spaces and we look a bit too open. And pace wise probably get caught out a little bit on transitions whereas with that back five if obviously the likes of Taylor Hines Emma Kovis don't want to get forward you've got that solid three and Clark Bonner um, and obviously the other centre half um, Grace Fisk, Grace Fisk yeah. the defenders they love to defend they're out and out defenders so that's so important and then you've got obviously Fuka who supports and, and is in that front supporting the back three so I really like that mm. uh, Grace Fisk has uh, been catching up with Steve Hunter uh, here's the, uh, the chat that they had a short time ago Grace, great to see you, as always. Last home game of the calendar year. How important is it to try and send the fans home and give them a really Merry Christmas? Yeah, definitely. Obviously, we pride ourselves on our, our home games and we want to you know, make it really difficult for teams to come here. So we've had a good record so far at home and we want to continue that and you know, go into the Christmas break with a good record for the, for the home season. Outstanding performance last game, wasn't it, against Brighton? Yeah, really good. I think it was. we were all saying it's nice to actually be comfortable for once because usually it's quite tight. So really good performance. We were really clinical um, and we deserve the win. So hopefully we continue that today. And defensively as a unit, we've been so solid this season, haven't we? You're very much part of, part of that with Gemma and Jenna, of course, in there. How much are you enjoying life at Liverpool? Yeah, really good. Obviously, last week it was good to get a clean sheet because we'd not had one of those in a while. Um, so it's good to get back to getting a clean sheet. Um, and yeah, I think just the whole team um, in general, you know, everyone puts a good shift in defensively. Um, so, you know, we can go on, on an attack. Um, but as a back three, me, Jenna and Jenna, we've, you know, obviously tried to be as, you know, good at clean, clean sheets as possible. Um, but obviously, Neve's back now. Jazz is coming back soon. So it's all competition for places and we're all, you know, competing to try and be the best for the team we can. Grace, thank you so much as always. Good luck today. No worries, thank you. Oh, yeah, she's had a good start to life at uh, Liverpool. Let's take a brief look then at the uh, team for the opposition today in uh, Bristol City, and there'll be some names in there that you will uh, recognise. Certainly, if you've a bit of legacy as uh, a Liverpool fan, quite a few of Liverpool's former players in there, uh, including the the goals up top uh, with Threstrup, who wears number 17. Amy Rogers, who wears number eight, uh, was here as a young midfielder as well. In fact, she played a bit of a part in LFC TV games in the past as well. And uh, no Rachel Furnish you will be happy to know as Liverpool fans because she always has a tendency to uh, to pop up with some vital goals as well but Emily Threstrup is probably the one that, that springs off the sheet Tash four goals so far and she'll be desperate to do well here today absolutely and, and this is no disrespect to her but I was a little bit surprised when I saw her scoring so many goals early on because I followed her career quite a lot she was at PSV and one of my best over there was at West Ham you know obviously here at Liverpool and in my opinion she's not really a natural goal scorer she hasn't really scored too many goals everywhere she's gone but credit to her four goals in eight games in a team that's bottom of the table struggling that's not easy yes two of those goals were penalties but Testrup the one thing with her is she will run all day long for you you know she's an honest player she won't stop running and that's what she's going to have to do today for this Bristol team and look we need to be aware of that she'll be full of confidence coming into the game one of your players from from those championship days as well a really important part 
part of the squad. Yeah, massively. I think it's it's it, you've got to you've got to expect the unexpected at times because they that's the saying that they work really hard for each other. They're really compact, but once they've 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 won that possession, they just start splitting and they start going forward. And it's how you cope with that mm. as a team. Well, listen, there's no rain. It is quite a nice temperature here as well. The heated gillets don't need to go on for our guests, but Tash will be alongside Steve Hunter, who's wrapped up warm and uh, ready to talk you through all of this action this afternoon, which comes live the other side of this break right here on LFC TV. It's about where your dad went. It's about where your grandfather went. It's about a builder over the years of stories, of sounds, of smells, of memories, which you just simply can't replace anywhere else. That was our manager, and everybody loves him. A lot of time in my life I thought back to this moment. How can a club like Liverpool never have won the cup? you realize just what it meant to people. Nothing is impossible. Things change in football, in life like this. I went through all this and I know what some family is going through, so give them a chance. Every time I played at Anfield, whatever I was with the ball, we like deja vu. Things had flashed through your mind in half a second. Shagley was convinced the reason we lost the cup final in 71 was because of the shirts. They said it was like sacks on our back. That was a posh jock. You were? Yeah, oh, from, being from Edinburgh. I went out for dinner with Kenny that night and I said to him, I said, look, this is the worst Liverpool side I've ever played in my life. This team's going to win nothing. And that's why I, of course, became a pundit. Liverpool felt very much like the centre of the known universe. And of course, in the midst of all this, you have Bill Shankly, who fed off it, the Liverpool kind of arrogance, if you like. What that fan pack gave us, walking down to that ground, there was a belief in absolutely everyone. I just wish I was 25 again, so I have another 10 years, but life doesn't work like that, does it? There's the cross. Lovren! Yes! The roof has come oh! up on field! It comes to Lallana! Oh, no, I don't believe it. Klopp's off. The players are off. The most ridiculous game of football that you will ever see. Top three. Chamberlain! Stunning moment. Stunning hit. What a night. What a hero. What an arrival in a red shirt. Here's Firmino again. He's still going out, Firmino! Oh, that's absolutely wonderful! It's Alexander Arnold! Absolutely emphatic! Fabinho with the strike! Oh, my word! Mane chasing lovely take, lawyers come. And Mane's turned in! And Sadio Mane for Liverpool! With a brilliant away goal! Shakiri. One end to the other, unbelievable first half. Oh, Pickford's lost it, David Carigi! Unbelievable! Jürgen Klopp can't believe it. 
Divock Origi, he's won the European Cup for Liverpool! Number six is on its way to Anfield! It doesn't get any better than this! Liverpool, the champions of Europe! Here's Salah, he's got a run on goal, he's still going, and Salah for Liverpool! Have a little bit of that! Liverpool Football Club are champions of England once again. It's Alexander on, oh it's Alisson! Unbelievable! It's absolutely astonishing! You will never see such drama again! Good afternoon, everybody. We are in Birkenhead in Wirral. Great to have live coverage of Liverpool FC women again as they take on Bristol City in Matt Bean's side's final home game of the calendar year. They've got two away games against Everton in the Cup on Wednesday. Manchester United away to finish next week, but three priceless points in the Barclays Women's Super League again are at stake for Liverpool FC women this afternoon. Right then, let's have a closer check on today's two lineups, and we will start, as always, with a look at Liverpool. And I can tell you that Matt Beard has named an unchanged side from that 4-0 win over Brighton, which obviously was before the international break. Australian international Tegan Micah, who made her first start in the WSL against Brighton, stays in goal for this one. Jasmine Matthews still ruled out with a hamstring injury. No Mia Enderby on the bench. She picked up concussion on international duty with England under-19s. She is OK, she won't be out long, but obviously under the concussion protocols, missing today. Marie Herbiger again looking to provide real quality for Liverpool in midfield today. And up front, Sophie Roman Hall, full of confidence after a goal and two assists in the last game against Brighton. As for the visitors, well, Bristol City under Lauren Smith might be bottom of the WSL. Of course, they achieved promotion by winning the championship last season. But Matt Bean says, you know, they're tough to play against. Their position defies, really that they're not a bad side at all but Lauren Smith has a blow today because their key defender Brooke Aspin is ruled out injured she got a knock in the game against Arsenal she doesn't make it two changes from that loss to Arsenal of course former Liverpool star Rachel Finesse ruled out injured but two ex-reds Amy Rogers and Amelie Testrup all start. Another former Liverpool FC women favourite, Satara Murray, also misses out. Like Rachel Furness, she is also out injured. But the final home game of the calendar year, speaking to the, the girls at Melwood on Friday, the Exeter Melwood training centre, they were all determined to send the fans home with an early Christmas present. As ever, delighted to welcome alongside us the first female club ambassador Liverpool Football Club have ever had. The goal machine, the fans' favourite, Natasha Dowie. Oh, that's nice of you, Steve. Let's hope so. <laughs> no, really looking forward to the game today, especially after the last result against Brighton. You know, the girls looked on really good form. It's going to be a tough game today. It's not going to be easy, but I see a victory for us. But we've got to be patient. Patience is going to be the key today because Bristol are going to come here. They're going to make it hard for us with that back five. But I think we've just got too much quality. And, and in the end, I think that quality is going to shine through. Stacey Fullix, our match day referee for this one today. Liverpool, by the way, have lost just one of the last seven in the WSL against Bristol City, and the Reds have won eight of the last 11 WSL home games. Only Chelsea have more points than Liverpool at home. So Matt Beard has always said we want to make Prenton Park a fortress, but as we about to get underway, the players, staff and officials taking the knee sending out a powerful message around the world no room for racism discrimination of any form anywhere great to have your company as always for this one today another interesting point out of this one tats is bristol city have conceded a wsl high eight goals from set plays this season we all know that marie herbinger with her delivery the quality she has yeah, absolutely. You know, 22 goals throughout all competitions, you know, so that says a lot. So as a striker, 
You know, I'd be looking for goals today. You know, if I was Vanessa van der Sanden and Sophie Hawk, especially like you said with Marie Hovinger's delivery, we know how many chances she's been creating already this season. I definitely see goals for us today. Megan Connolly, the Bristol City women captain today, new signing for Brighton and Hove Albion in the summer. Dangerous ball thumped forward away by the standard chartered player of the month for November, Gemma Bonner. Back with Connolly again. Taylor Hines, a little bit unfortunate, but the Wales international, Ella Powell, gets past it. Amy Rogers, a former Liverpool favourite, of course, joining from London City Lionesses in the summer. Well read again by Bonnet. Sophie Roman Hall coming deep. And a fine Kerry Holland. And the Sandons after Powell, putting her under real pressure. Yeah, there's some definite key players in this Bristol team that Liverpool need to be aware of. Ella Powell is one of those. Welsh international, she's a really powerful, strong player. So it's going to be a good matchup between her and Taylor Hines. Both of them will like to get forward, so I'm looking forward to seeing that one and how it pans out. Powell is maybe looking to try and get a throw down the line. And deep there was Fifian Morgan and the other Wales international. With Naomi Lasselle, Liverpool trying to win it back again. The foul on the Norway international, Sophie Roman Hawg, who grabbed her first goal on home territory against Brenton Park. It was deserved. Yeah, that was huge for her. I think it's really important. There's been a lot of talk about maybe the goals that she wasn't scoring, but I think last week or the week before was massive for her to get two assists and a goal up for Player of the Month nominee as well. So she'll be really on a high right now. Grace Fisk just with a loose pass in the end and Morgan gets away from Fuka Nagano. For me, I think, Steve, here, the game's going to be one with who's back five defends the best because if you look at Bristol's front line, they've got some real pace, you know, and they're a real threat on the counter, but then actually so are we. So I'm really intrigued to see, actually, as a team, which team defends better. By the way, it really is the calm after the storm today. Yesterday, of course, Tranmere Rovers played on this pitch and they got a vital late winner in that one. Played in a 70 mile an hour howling gale. No sign of any win today. <laughs> Talk about contrast. Which is probably a good thing. Absolutely. I was in my house last night thinking it was going to get blown down. The storm was that bad. <laughs> so, yeah, it's lovely to be sitting here. That You see the sun shining. It's a beautiful afternoon at Prenton Park. A touchback for the Australian international, Tegan Micah. Brought in from Rusengard during the summer. Matt Beard has said, coming into this game, in his weekly column on the website, he said, we're going to have to be patient today. So they play a very different game to Brighton. Bristol City can frustrate us. He said, but if we're patient and then wait for the key moments, stay together. Absolutely, I think that's going to be key. You know, switching the play, keeping the ball moving, waiting for the openings to happen, and then, like you said, set pieces are going to be huge. There's Abby Harrison, the Scotland international, leading the line. Amy Rogers, Harrison. It's good play. Slightly overhit up towards Amelie Testrup, who made her move to Bristol City permanent during the summer after a loan. PSV last season. Yeah, that backfire for Liverpool will be worked today. Testrup will not stop running. You know, she will work you for 90 minutes, so they need to be ready for that. A bonnet, a prolific Gemma Bonnet in November. They scored a goal from a corner. She'll be looking to get one again today, as I say, with it's a good ball by Taylor Hines. Look at the space here for Kerry Holland, the Wales international. Hines to shoot. Yeah, not on a stronger foot there. But look, you don't shoot, you don't score. It's my favourite saying. And it's not such a bad thing to get an effort off early doors. Great run by Kerry Holland to hold the play up. And if that was on Taylor's left foot, I think we would have seen a better finish there. Yeah, Taylor Hines, the 24-year-old, continuing with the captain's armband. Nee Farhi back amongst the substitutes recently as well, the club captain. Followed by Olivia Clark. Harrison beating Bonnet in the air. There's Coe Visto. A loose header there by Grace Fisk and Tegan Micah had to be on real alert there against Testrup. 
Yeah, she did. I don't think Grace Fisk got enough on that header, and Tegan did well there. Like I said, Tesprit will chase down everything. What a lovely pass that was by Fuka Nagano. Holland releasing Shanice van der Sanden. This is what she likes doing. Good block in the end by Emily Syme. As the Dutch international try to cut inside. Bristol City looking dangerous on the counter. Harrison. Here's Jamie Lee Napier, the Scotland international. A lot of space here. Herbinger trying to close it down. And Herbinger doing her defensive duties really well. Yeah, great defending there, 1v1 by Marie Herbinger. And Van der Sanden trying to turn defence into attack with an instant. Yeah, it's been a really good start to the game, hasn't it? Both teams are really going for it, playing some good football. You know, not too much goal mouth action as of yet, but it's been a really lively start to the game. So have a call of this though. There with the ball there. Hey, I've just spotted a Liverpool legend a few yards away from us. Welcome back to Prenton Park, Rachel Finesse. I'm sure Fernie wouldn't mind me and you both saying we're glad she's not playing today. Yeah, I definitely think you'd have seen a, a Furness header winning you today if she was yeah, playing. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Napier. Mustaki. Still goalless so far in this Liverpool FC women's final home game of the calendar year. There's some great games here. Most notable. One of my favourites was Manchester City. You probably know why I've said that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your comeback goal. Comeback goal. What a, what a performance as well it was. Brilliant performance. Yeah, there's been some great performances here at Prenton, and we really have made it our fortress. Here we go. Got out in the end by Chloe Mustaki. There's Jenna Clark to cover. Yeah, Abby Harris just making a good point there, actually. She's saying, look at the size of them, look at the size of the centre-halves for Liverpool. So they need to stop playing long, and because they're going to be winning those headers all day long, they need to get the ball on the floor. Here's Emma Coavisto, the fin. Nice touch by Herbinger. Kerry Holland into Van der Sanden. Oh, just slightly over here. Nearly. Yeah, nearly. Just the way to pass the final execution, but a great, again, a great run by Shanice. And that's why we want to see Kerry Holland picking up those balls just in front of the back line. You know, good idea, just poor execution in the end. Also a strong bench option again for Matt Beard. He said he wants real competition for places. I think he's got that. This season, the likes of Mel Lawley, Missy Bo Kearns, kicking the, at the heels to get back in. Yeah, Leanne Keenan, you know, Matt Beer's been really impressed with her impact off the bench. And the squad's so strong now that you have players that are in the stands. They're not even involved on the bench. So, you know, it is. It's a great headache for Matt Beer to have. And if you don't perform, then, you know, you get replaced. It's, it's ruthless now. Mustaki with the throw here for Lauren Smith's side. Napier. Look at the space here. Jamie Lee Napier. Powell. And there's Herbinger finding Sophie Roman Horn. Herbinger, nicely done. Here's Taylor Hines. Straight towards Connolly, who cut it out. Well, Bristol City women, actually, folks, are, are a team that Liverpool FC women have wonderful memories playing against. Tasha Dowie, alongside her, certainly has two, two great memories of playing against Bristol, winning the Super League twice against Bristol City, who are opposition twice in a row wasn't it yeah absolutely bristol you know back in the day when we won the league back to back they were the team that were always competing for the title so yeah. i'm sure they'll want to get back to where they used to be Herbinger, the austrian international 
Clark. Offside given in the end. And of course, Bristol City was where at Ashton Gate, Liverpool FC women achieved promotion back to the WSL. Yeah, so there is. There's lots of, you know, fond rivalries between these two teams. And I think you can tell that straight away already by the game today. Some feisty tackles have gone in. You know, both sets of players have played against each other many a time, so they know each other's games inside out. What a lovely day it's turned out, by the way. <laughs> oh, it's absolutely stunning. Makes me want to get my football boots on. It's a perfect game, didn't weather for a football match. Didn't expect this. Strong challenge by Amy Rogers, who'll certainly be very determined to do well here today. She's done well since leaving Liverpool. She did really well at London City Lionesses, and she's coming here. Yeah, I'm really happy to see, you know, Amy Rogers' progress. You know, real technician, has always been a good football player, and it's nice to see how much she's developed over the, the last couple of years, and now a regular starter, probably one of the first on the team sheet for this Bristol team. Jana Clark, of course, who played for Scotland against England during the international break. She's done really well since coming into Liverpool. Bonner, Grace Fisk, who... Played with Matt Beard at West Ham United. And she left the Hammers in the summer to move to Merseyside. And Bonner back towards Jenna Clark. In fact, the Sandin really put pressure on the goalkeeper. She's unlucky. Shanice there. Here's Amy Rogers. Cut out by Coa Visto. Fuka Nagana. Fuka Nagano again, the Japan international. Jana Clark. Loose. And now Fifian Morgan. He's got a bit of pace. She's got Napier in support. And Bristol City get a free kick in a dangerous situation. It was Jenna Clark who made the initial error. Yeah, overplaying a little bit in the wrong areas there, Liverpool. And Fiona Morgan has pace to burn. You know, a regular international for Wales. I've watched her a lot. Um, and my partner, obviously, Becky Scouts for Wales. So I've, I know a lot of these players. And that is one thing that she has got and that Liverpool need to be aware of. So you can't afford to be giving away the ball unnecessarily there because they do have the likes of Testrup, Morgan, like I said, Ella Powell that have that pace to hurt you in behind. Well, you don't see this very often. One of the centre-backs taking a set-piece. By the way, she's got to be good then. Megan Connolly. This yeah. is quite a unique situation. This. Yeah, Republic of Ireland international, real experience. This would like be like the equivalent of Virgil Van Dijk taking our free kicks, but you want him in the box. <laughs> or Bonner. Swept in low. Yeah, that's a really poor delivery in the end. Didn't even beat the first player, and actually the referee has had a bit of a nightmare there because yeah. Liverpool were away there. So for her to block that, Matt Beard doesn't look very happy at all on the sideline. I was going to say that there, Tash, because the referee, she stopped the play, but then Van der Sanden is accel accelerating. She's through, yeah, she's, she's away. So, yeah, poor, poor, poor positioning there by the referee. Yeah, surely advantage has got to be played there. Tegan Miker again. A couple of times we play Tegan Miker a little bit too short. We need to be careful there. There's been a couple of short back passes which have allowed Bristol to really put her under pressure. I just think we need to be careful that we don't overplay in the wrong areas. Bristol City, of course, one of only two sides without a WSL clean sheet so far. And they've only won one out of their last 15 WSL games, a 3 2 win at. West Ham back in last month. But of course, that statistic does include the time when they were in the WSL a few years ago before they got relegated. Hervinger, Van der Sanden, did brilliantly to make that hers. Good work by Coa Visto, Hervinger. And the free kick given to Bristol City. 
Yeah, and a little bit of a late challenge there on the keeper by Sophie Hawke. So, I mean, she has to go for the ball. It's a ball that she's entitled to go for, but she's just left a little bit on her there. So Olivia Clark looks in a bit of pain and discomfort. One thing I was going to say, Steve, that I've noticed, and I don't know whether it's because of Marie Herbinger's influence in midfield, but I feel like the last few games, maybe Fuka um, hasn't gotten the ball as much or maybe had the influence that she did have last season. And we know the influence, obviously, that Marie Herbinger has had, but I would just like to see us get Fuka on the ball a bit more. She's a magician. And if we can get both of those two um, you know, on the ball more, connecting more, I think we could really impact this game a lot more. Yeah, been a fantastic signing for this football club, Fuka Nagano, the Japan international when she came in January, of course, from North Carolina College. I love those team names, by the way. Brilliant. No, but I think both teams will be happy with how the game started. Probably Bristol more so, because I think Liverpool are heavy favourites here today and they haven't really troubled Bristol too much. But like what we said earlier, it is going to be about patience today. And I think when you are playing so well as, as Liverpool are, teams are going to bank up against you and try and make it hard and that's where we just have to be patient you know get those good deliveries into the box we know how good Sophie Hogg is in the air so deliveries are going to be vital you know and like I said I think we've got enough quality that we will take the chances when they come as we said folks Matt Beard I think the manager's right by what we've seen so far he says the way that Bristol City plays, that it's important we don't get frustrated. We're really good on the counter-attack. We have to keep playing, keep trying to break them down. It's been a couple of half chances so far. Certainly the one Kerry Holland drove through, almost got Van der Sanden in behind them. Here's Herbinger again. Loose touch that time. Forward by Abby Harrison, but not the layoff she wanted. Hines. Van der Sanden defended by Megan Connolly but Shanice Van der Sanden has got it back couldn't quite link with Sophie Roman Hogg and now Symes Mustaki Stacky again. Jenna Clark has that covered. And Coa Visto to Gemma Bonnet. Fisk. Shanice van der Sanden on the acceleration. But the 19 year old Naomi Lazelle was there. Yeah, that's much better play by Liverpool. The way that we use. Fuka there to bounce in and to then to bounce out, switch the play nice and quickly. It opens up those channels then for Shanice Van der Sanden to use her pace to get in behind. Really good play by Liverpool. Hines. Sophie Roman Hogg, lovely touch. Taylor Hines. Can she get the cross in? The skipper doing well there. Now, this is a first examination. We said before about Bristol City, a team that have conceded the most goals from set plays this season. And we saw in the last game when Marie Herbinger delivered for Gemma Bonner to score. Maybe today Grace Fisk or Jenna Clark could get their first goals for the club, which would be nice. Herbinger went low in towards Bonner. Here's Coavisto to cover for Liverpool. 
She did well there, really well, because Fionn Morgan was really running there. And she, like I said, got pace to burn, so under pressure there and real calm, composed defending to, to play back to Tegan Micah. Amanda Sander never gives up. She's running after this, putting pressure on Ella Powell. That's where we're so strong, though, Steve. You know, the players will, they'll run all day for you, and they've got that pace. And then when they run out of gas, you've got the likes of Mia Endervies, Leanne Keenan's with pace up front, you know, even the likes of Tash, Tash Flint. So, you know, it's going to be a tough evening for Bristol. And if they're going to get anything out of the game today, it's going to be tough, tough work for them. Fuka Nagano. It's a bit loose. And Taylor Hines fouling Napier. Taylor could get the yellow card for that. For a shirt pull. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a hard one, isn't it? You could say it's a professional foul, you know, stopping them on the counter. But also now you've got a yellow card early on in the game. So now Bristol will be definitely targeting Taylor Hines. Goal is here in this Barclays Women's Super League encounter. Liverpool FC Women's final home game of 2023. Forward by Connolly. Here's Fisk. Rogers. Herbinger. It's an awkward bounce there. On the sun, a bit. Unfortunate. Napier. Nibbled away. Corvisto nearly won it back. Here's Ella Powell. Linking here with Sime. Rogers. Emily Sime again. Napier. Take it on Corvisto. It was an awkward bobble and nearly fell for Fionn Morgan there. Joe, you know that's really nice play by Bristol City. Really patient, worked it across the pitch nicely. Napier down this left-hand side, positive, taking on Emma Coy, Visto 1v1. It's a good cross into the box and unlucky, really, that it didn't fall to a Bristol player. Taylor Hines. Van der Sanden. Good. Come with Visto, Hervinger. Luca Nagano again, but the pressing by Emily Sign for Lauren Smith's side. For Stacky. Luca Nagano putting the press on. with Manchester City edging out Aston Villa yesterday. Liverpool are now five points off third spot. Just one point off fourth place Manchester United coming into this. Yeah, we're in a really good position. You know, probably actually overachieved in some people's opinions, maybe with regards to how other clubs have strengthened this year. But, you know, we're right in there, Steve, you know, behind the, the top four that are always up there competing. But I really see us now you're getting closer and closer to, you know, those teams that are always up there. And this season, you know, if we continue performing the way we are, there's no reason why in the next couple of years we won't be up there competing for trophies again. Sophie roman Hawk, Hines, Van der Sanden. A twist and turn in a real confined space. Keeper forced into any meaningful save of note yet. Test drop. Morgan trying to turn. There's Tegan Micah to gather the summer signing. 26, the Australian. It's fascinating though watching it because it really is like a matchup. You know, five. No, five at the back, three midfield, two up top. It's really man for man everywhere. Now Van der Sanden, good defending there by Lazelle. 
Uh, Shanice tried to just get past her with a pace. Bonner. Kerry Holland. Bonner. The midfield general at the moment. Here's Van der Sander. Great ball in. Sophie Roman Hogg. Well, Herbiger have made a great run into the box there as well, you know. Really nice play there, and I think that's what Gemma Bonner does really well. You know, drifts into that midfield position a bit like a Trent Alexander-Arnold role. You know, plays a beautifully weighted pass into Shanice Van der Sander down the left. It's a lovely cut back. Sophie Hogg a little bit unlucky trying to turn. You can see what she's trying to do there, but it's good defending by Bristol City. Forward by Olivia Clark. Bonner's there again, forceful header. got a really good work ethic about them Bristol City so from a Liverpool perspective Tash they've got they've got to match that haven't they absolutely you know there's no easy game now in the WSL every team is so strong every team's in this league for a reason you know players in their team playing international football you know and they'll think that maybe they can get some points here today space now for Napier putting inside Herbinger too far, that cross for Testrup. Yeah, he's a positive player. I like Napier. I like what I see already this game. You know, really positive down this left-hand side. Cuts in and actually puts, you know, a decent whipped in ball in, but she's got to get her head up. There's only one player in the box, so maybe that's where she needs to be a little bit more patient. Connolly. City being patient themselves and earning a set play. It's Fionn Morgan. Wales International will take. This is probably where they wish they had a finesse playing today, you know, so strong in the air. So it'll be interesting to see how they obviously use this and use the players that they've got available. It's a good header there by Jenna Clark. Well, Napier, Kerry Holland trying to get there, forward by Powell, dangerous awkward bounce this, can Taylor Hines deal with it, and it's a shot in the end by Lozelle. I tell you what, it's not a bad effort at all, they do really well there to get on the second balls, it's lifted back into the Liverpool area really nice, it's bouncing awkwardly, you know, you see here Napier gets on it, it bounces over, Paul Taylor, Taylor Hines can't hit, clear it, and their first two in is just wide of the post. That was close on the away side. Hines there before Rogers. Bonner. Mustaki. Napier. Mustaki again. Amy Rogers. That's a lovely turn by Napier, Crystal City, get the set piece. Really nice turn there by Napier, does well to draw the foul. No, it is, it's a fascinating game, it's been some real high quality football. You know, it hasn't been many shots on goal, but the possession from both teams, I've been really impressed with today. Forward by Connolly. Rogers. Amy Rogers again. Good ball in that. Chance. And Lazelle's in there again. Forward from the back. Yeah, they're piling the pressure on at the moment. And Liverpool, like they always do, are defending well. But Amy Rogers, what a ball into the box here. Great ball into the box. And then I think it's Fisk. Fisk with the touch, otherwise that's a goal. And she's actually facing her own goal, so she could have easily scored an own goal there, but great defending there by Fisk. Yeah, superb there by the former Hammer, Grace Fisk. This is a really good spell, though, for Bristol City. Liverpool make, need to make sure we see this, this tough patch out now. Morgan, again to take. Jenna Clark with a good header away.
Test drop. It's an awkward the way that ball's coming down. <laughs> Do you know what? Good job, Tegan Micah has safe hands there because that's not easy at all. It's a long, lofted ball into the air. The sun could easily catch her eyes, but she made that look very easy. Yeah, that could easily deceive you, that one. Fisk again. Hines. See Beardy getting frustrated on the bench. Another layoff goes astray. And a bit too many of them in this first half. From another full perspective. Maybe just got to sharpen up a bit. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, in this spell that Bristol have, have dominated the last five minutes. So Liverpool now just need to keep the ball a bit. You know, pass it around the back, keep possession. You know, don't force balls like that. You know, I know we've got willing runners, but also sometimes just have spells of possession. You don't always need to go forward every time. I also get the impression that we played over half an hour here and like the men's team yesterday, how big a difference the substitutes made. Joe Gomez, Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott, the match winner, they were brilliant when they came on and the way this game is developing, you can't help but think that the likes of Mel Lawley, Leanne Keane and with their electric pace, their directness could be another good option. Absolutely. You know, we have so many different styles of players on the bench. Amel Lawley, who can dribble, who can penetrate with her runs. Leanne Keenan with her pace in behind. So I'm definitely sure we'll see players. Herbing get trying to link there with Sophie Roman Hall. Maybe just the wrong option there, because I'll tell you something, Tash. She, I thought that was a good position that Marie Herbing had got herself into, that I thought she was maybe going to cut inside. Do you know what? It's a great point, Steve. I was actually thinking she's been quite quiet this first, you know, 30 minutes. And actually, you're spot on. Great position for her. Normally, she'd pull the trigger or look to put a good cross into the box, but instead tried a bit of an awkward ball into Sophie Hogg, and it went out in the end. So I think maybe that's why we've been struggling a bit. We haven't got her on the ball or affecting the game as much as she normally does. Still awaiting the first goal, still awaiting the first meaningful chance for Liverpool here. Bristol City have gone closest. Two efforts by their defender coming forward. Naomi Lazelle. One great bit of defending from Grace Fist at the back post. Denied the away side too. Gemma Bonner. because even though that went out, I'm probably going to think I'm defending her because she's my closest friend, but I don't think that's such a bad ball by Gemma Bonner, but I think the likes of Taylor Hines' fist, they need to get up the pitch higher. You can see Gemma Bonner's driving out with it. She wants to go forward, so make those runs. to see the flags behind Tegan Micah's goal Jay Goodall and the official Liverpool FC Women Supporters Club do such a great job in promoting the team and trying to generate more support for the team as well and here's Van der Sanden trying to light up Prenton Park here with a bit of magic Napier there before Coa Visto be fair to Bristol City, they've picked up a lot of second balls in this opening 34 minutes. Yeah, they have. I actually think we can afford to step on a little bit. They've only got two up top and we've got a back five, so I think that we shouldn't be able to allow the strikers to get on the ball as easy as they have. Now Chloe Mustaki. Fuka Nagano. Oof. Rogers, test drop. Now Herbinger. Clark. Janet Clark again.
the Suns well. Tash Matt Beard was saying he's got the option now. We talked about the strength on the bench to switch formations. And it's not working, so we'll see how that goes. Good run by Coa Visto. Dangerous ball in, but in the end, the goalkeeper grateful to take it. Yeah, not bad there. Those crosses, cross slash shot, can easily go in. So Olivia Clark, the Welsh number one, does well there. Safe hands. But yeah, you're spot on. You know, I think it's okay right now. You know, I think we probably would have liked to have had more hits on goal. But like you said, we can always go to that 4-3-3 formation as well that we used a lot last year and this season already. But as we say, the key thing, and the manager was at pains to mention this this week, we don't get frustrated, he said his big message to the team in this one is. Even if it thinks like things are not going great for us, he said that. So the well organised this team. Here's Herbinger. Sophie Roman Hall coming deep. Herbinger again. Hines. Just did well there, Taylor Hines, and Liverpool get a free kick. Good situation. Yeah, really good situation. I actually think, I'm not too sure it was a foul in the end. I thought, like, she got the ball cleanly. So I think it's actually a little bit unlucky there for Bristol, but a great position now for Marie Herbinger to put in a good ball with the likes of Jenna Clark, Fisk, Gemma Bonner. You know, we've got so much strength and height in that box. And like we said, Bristol have struggled with set pieces this season. Yeah, got to take advantage of that tax, haven't they? So important, especially in a game like this. Herbinger will leave it for Hines. No, whipped in by Herbinger. Flick on by Jenna Clark. Oh, it's a shame. You know, it's probably not the best ball, not a lot of, you know, pace on that. So Jenna Clark does well there to actually get the flick on. And I would just like the players to have continued their run. You know, as a number nine, you've got to always think the best. And it's a good flick on, and that could be a nice little tap in for someone, but no one's really expecting the best there. And of course, these games as well, coming back on the back of an international break can be quite disruptive can't it Tats? yeah it can a lot of players have come back late they probably haven't had real a real proper training session together it'll be more you know video analysis so it's never easy but everyone's in the same situation absolutely sign powell powell again Morgan, Rogers, well done, Gemma Bonnet gets Liverpool to throw in. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating to to see you know changes Matt Beard makes, and we all know that. Matt Beard makes changes, not afraid to do that. So, you know, I don't think there's anything to worry about or to panic. Um, but I do think that if the day game does continue like this, some changes will be made. Probably quite early on, if not at half time. Yeah, it's just not happening in the final third so far for the Reds. Dangerous this test drop. Stopped by Bonner. Napier. Mustaki, Napier again. Well stopped by Fuka Nagano. Coavisto. And the Finland international doing well. Yeah, good doubling up by both of them. Uh, Fuka Nagano there in the corner doing well, helping out, and then Emma Coavisto wins the foul. So good teamwork there. But I really have been impressed by Bristol. You know, I haven't seen a lot of them this season, but I've been really impressed with what I've seen. and. You know, you can tell, you know, they're in a fight right now. They need points desperately, and they really are fighting for everything today. So I, I believe that if we lift it individually, just by one or two percent in this Liverpool team, then this game shouldn't be a problem for us. Breaks back for Fukunagano. Now Grace Fisk. 
It's a good ball into space for Shanice van der Sanden. Brave play by Jenna Clark. Forward from the back here. Bonner. Coevisto. Up towards Sophie Roman Hall. Good touch, Fuka Nagana. In by Fisk. Sophie Roman Hogg. Yeah, that's really the first cross from wide that we've put in today that Sophie Hall can actually attack, but, you know, just not, again, not enough pace on it, too far out. I'd like to see us maybe get higher up the pitch into better crossing areas for then for the number 10 to attack, because we know how good she is in the box. The Liverpool players wearing the special jerseys today with the fu future makers. Yeah, the kit looks really smart. Yeah, backed by our official partner, Standard Chartered, their fu future makers campaign. There's some wonderful work making a difference all over the world. She's very clever, Emma, with regards to how she gets fouls. You know, she's, she's, she's good with how she uses her body and she always wins fouls in good areas for us. It's something that the fullback's very good at. It's been a tough old half, this. As I say, we're not surprised after what Matt B had told us. The manager thought in his pre-match has happened. Test drop caught offside. And it's still a case of staying patient. Yeah, that's a close one, that. Really close. Great ball over the top. It looked very tight for me. I'd like to watch that one back, because I actually thought that Jenna Clark was playing her on there, but the line I put, put the flag up straight away, but... She's given Tesco a yellow card. Is that kicking the ball away, and, and allegedly? I'm not sure about that. No, I'm not. I think that's a little bit harsh there. But no, you're right, Steve. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised, but I think because of the performance last game against Brighton, 4-0, and we really should have scored six or seven, we kind of almost get spoiled and think we're going to expect the same, but that's not always the case. I think the referee has given the free kick for the foul on Taylor Hines before it looked like we're going to wave play on. And a couple of minutes left of the half, plus stoppage time. Game lacking any real cut quality chances so far. But that's the thing with the back five, it's harder then to get our forwards in behind. Last week, obviously, it was a lot easier with the back four, but limited spaces today with the way that Bristol are playing. So that's why we have to move it quicker, we have to be patient, trying to get, like I said, the likes of Marie Herbin got on the ball more. Yeah, there's only going to be two minutes additional time at the end of the half. Still goalless here at Prenton Park. Morgan. Powell. Oh, half a chance there for Abby Harrison. Yeah, it is. You know, I've played against Abby Harrison many a time. She's a strong, powerful player. She's got a shot. She can shoot from distance. She scored many goals from far out. And she'll be disappointed there that she didn't expect better, that she wasn't ready to control that ball, because that was half a chance for Bristol. Well, Sophie Roman Hall coming deep, but then Amy Rogers winning it back. Holland away by Fisk. Good play there. Good strength by Fuka Nagano. Yeah, really good play. Nice battle. There's battles all over the pitch. I'm really enjoying it. You know, both teams play the same formation, and, and it's fascinating to see who's coming out on top of their 1v1s. Just officially confirmed in two minutes additional time. I would say the thing that we've probably really missed is getting our midfield. You know, Kerry Holland, you haven't seen much of her so far. Even Fuka, the likes of Marie Herbiger. These are players that can really affect the game in a positive way for us. But Bristol have done well by really nullifying that area. Holland making a forward run here. What she loves to do. Is that going to go? Oh, it's going to go for a 
A goal kick at the end, much to Kerry Holland's frustration. during the international break the last couple of weeks the likes of Coa Visto, Fuka Nagano, Herbinger, Sophie Roman Hall, Harry Holland, Fuka Nagano have all been away. Shanice van der Sanden has been away of course with the Dutch squad. Herbinger meanwhile has picked up a knock. The Austrian still stays down. A little bit frustrated that the physio didn't come on. The referee is Marie Herbinger. Ties a boot lace. Yeah, to be fair, there's not much in it. I think it's one of those that when she's jumped up, the player's boots got caught in her laces. So I don't really think there's the ref doesn't need to stop that. I mean, unless she's hurt herself, but she looked okay to me. So Marie Herbinger has. Chris Underwood and Dr. Francesca Champ come on as well, just to make sure. I think it's a good period, though, for Matt Beard to talk to his team. I'm actually surprised he hasn't got out and is having maybe a conversation. But look, the half's nearly up now. Maybe he's waiting for half time to have that talk. And it's good to see the players actually in groups as well, discussing, you know, things that need to be worked on. You know, that's really important. That it's not always about the coaching staff to problem solve. The players have to problem solve themselves also. I do think, as we said before, Tash, after the, this international break, thankfully the last international break of the year, there's quite a few, isn't there? There's been quite a few this season. Certainly a lot more than the men's game and the women's game, the international breaks, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. The scheduling's a pain, to be honest. It's something that I definitely didn't enjoy last season, and I think it actually leads to a lot of injuries, the stop-start. And Harrison given offside. As the ball was played into that box. Do you think maybe Matt Beard might be thinking about that half time? But Bristol City do look that little bit fresher because they haven't had as obviously players away on as many as absolutely. we have. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So a tough half, really. Will probably be best to sum that up. Bristol City have competed really well. You know they might be bottom, but I tell you what, they compete well. They've had the best chances as well. Naomi Lazelle has had a couple of real good chances for Bristol City. In the end, there, as far as they were concerned, coming close from set pieces a couple of times. Liverpool have had a couple of half chances, perhaps one where Kerry Holland just slightly overhit pass for Shanice van der Sanden, but not really creating anything so far. But Matt Beard said, patience is the key today, and I think he's spot on. Half time, it's nil nil. It's about where your dad went. It's about where your grandfather went. It's about a builder over the years of stories, of sounds, of smells, of memories, which you just simply can't replace anywhere else. That was our manager, and everybody loves him. A lot of time in my life I thought back to this moment. How can a club like Liverpool never have won the cup? 
you realize just what it meant to people. Nothing is impossible. Things change in football, in life like this. I went through all this and I know what some family is going through, so give them a chance. Every time I played that Anfield, whatever I was with the ball, you like deja vu. Things that flash through your mind in half a second. Shagley was convinced the reason we lost the cup final in 71 was because of the shirts. They said it was like sacks on our back. That was a posh jock. You were? Yeah, oh, from, being from Edinburgh. I went out for dinner with Kenny that night and I said to him, I said, look, this is the worst Liverpool side I've ever played in my life. This team's going to win nothing. And that's why I, of course, became a pundit. Liverpool felt very much like the centre of the known universe. And of course, in the midst of all this, you have Bill Shankly, who fed off it, the Liverpool kind of arrogance, if you like. What that fan pack gave us, walking down to that ground, there was a belief in absolutely everyone. I just wish I was 25 again to so have another 10 years, but life doesn't work like that, does it? There's the cross. Lovren! Yes! The roof has come oh! up on field! It comes to Lallana! Oh, no, I don't believe it. Clops off. The players are off. The most ridiculous game of football that you will ever see. Top three. Chamberlain! Stunning moment. Stunning hit. What a night. What a hero. What an arrival in a red shirt. Here's Firmino again. And still going on, Firmino! Oh, that's absolutely wonderful! It's Alexander Arnold! Absolutely emphatic! Fabinho with the strike! Oh, my word! Mane chasing lovely take, lawyers come. And Mane's turned in! And Sadio Mane for Liverpool! With a brilliant away goal! Shakiri. One end to the other. Unbelievable first half. Oh, Pickford's lost it. David Carigi. Unbelievable. Jürgen Klopp can't believe it. Divo Carigi. He's won the European Cup for Liverpool. Number six. He's on its way to Anfield. It doesn't get any better than this. Liverpool, the champions of Europe. Here's Salah, he's got a run on goal, he's still going, and Salah for Liverpool! Have a little bit of that! Liverpool Football Club are champions of England once again. It's Alexander, oh it's Alisson! Unbelievable! It's absolutely astonishing! You will never see such drama again! Well, unfortunately, that tells the story of the first half. No goals to bring you in this game at Pretton Park. Liverpool are looking to continue on that winning run uh, here this afternoon. We are in the company of Paul McHugh, the former assistant manager of Matt Beard, and also Tash Dowie as well, has been watching it with Steve Hunter in that first half. Maka, who's on top, do you think? Oh, it's a hard one. I'm, I'm going I'm to be honest. If, if I'm being blunt and... I'm not going to be hard. I think Bristol are on top. I think they've created the most chances. Um, half chances, but they could have easily went in. I think they were more aggressive coming forward. So when they're in that defensive shape, they're nice and solid. It's hard for them to break through, but when they get it, you're getting three players running straight up in front. You've got one already there, but the other two go and join them, and it's causing them problems. Agree with that, Tash? Yeah, absolutely. I've been really impressed with Bristol today. You know, I expected Liverpool to really come out like they did against Brighton, you mm. know, full of confidence. You know, Bristol at bottom of the table, and I'm not saying that means we're guaranteed to win, but I just expected more from us today. But credit to Bristol. You know, they've got that back five and that solid back five, but they've got pace up front. Fear Morgan, you know, Abby Harrison, Testrup, like I said earlier, that will run all day for them. And, and to be fair, Amy Rogers for me in midfield put some really good balls into the box, causing us some problems. So we definitely need to up our game in the second half. 
Uh, let's take a look at some of the uh, the things that we're encouraging from uh, both teams' point of view. We'll start with uh, with Liverpool, probably just before the half hour point, where the the game kind of caught a little bit of light, and, and Liverpool with a half chance here. Yeah, absolutely. And again, it was great, Gemma Bonner getting into those pockets. Shanice, you know she'll run the channels for you all day long. And in, in this incident, I know it's easier said than done, but I actually think Sophie Hawker maybe pin the defender, roll it onto her right foot, and maybe look to get a shot off there. But it's good play, and we need to do this more. I think the biggest problem in this first half has been we haven't got our midfield players involved enough. You know, Marie Herbinger, she's influential. Kerry Holland has hardly seen the ball. The same with Fuka. So I think they're actually winning the midfield battle, so we need to get those players involved more. Uh, they're the kind of areas Paul and Liverpool need to get in an awful lot more often, don't they, to exploit the pace that Shanice uh, has in, in those positions? Yeah, I, I think I think if you just spun her and used that body to get round it, it would have, it would have caused a, probably a problem for them and hopefully it would have got a goal. But it's just turning into something and you don't really know what's there. So it's really important that the specific details has to come in. If there's no support, they have to go one-on-one -on -one mm. and try, try to get a shot on target and hopefully that goes in. Bristol City had a really good spell around about the half hour point, didn't they? A couple of chances that they probably feel they should have done slightly better with. Yeah, they did. And again, it's through Amy Rogers in particular. I think Napier as well down the left hand side has caused us a lot of problems. But it's hopeful balls lifted into the box. But what they've done is they've battled for the first balls, for the second balls. You know, they're not giving Liverpool anything. And they've, it's a half chance. You know, she's got a shot off in the end. It hasn't troubled Tegan Micah. But again, they're battling for everything. They're not letting Liverpool, you know, have a breather. And I think that's been their biggest strength this first half. is is how every single one of them has gone for it. And here as well, it's, it's a hopeful ball into the box again, as you can see. But again, you know, they get onto the second balls. They make something of it. Amy Rogers on the ball. This is a great ball into the box, whipped in. And I tell you what, if Fist doesn't get a toe on this, that's a tap in and it's 1-0 to Bristol. They'll feel they should have taken advantage of this, Paul. Yeah, I do. I think when they're in and around the box, I think they're throwing everything at it. And it's putting Liverpool under pressure because they're not giving anything away. They're just trying to fight for every chance they get for that ball. And if they keep doing that, you never know, they might get a goal off it. Uh, that was all coming from Liverpool not really being able to keep possession of the ball for any sustained period of time. Yeah, and I think that's a problem right now is we have pace up front, but with Bristol City's back five, we haven't got those channels or that, or that space to exploit. So that's where I think either we have to change formation and go to maybe a 4-3-3 and get more width, or we have to make sure then we get our midfield players on the ball in the pockets where they're so dangerous. Slight chance, you might say, just before the break for, for Liverpool, again in positions where... They probably need to do better with it. Yeah, I think, I think if I'm being honest, all over the pitch, they need to keep the ball. They need to be more patient on it. Don't force the play. Just have that moment where you're moving it across. And at times you can move it to the opposite side of the, of the pitch and there'll be gaps opening up because players switch off. So do more of that, but be, be aggressive in it. Mm. Don't just back off. Press them. Can you win it higher up? Uh, the one thing you will say about Liverpool is of the 12 goals they've scored this season, eight of them have come in the second half, so they are a team traditionally that come on strong, yeah. maybe uh, against the odds. Yeah, that's a good statistic. You know, I didn't know that, so I think that's great and it's positive for Liverpool. And I think that Bat Matt Beard isn't afraid to make changes. You know, there's some players, there's some tired legs out there today, so I think potentially there might be changes at half-time. If not, definitely within the next 10, 15 minutes, the likes of probably Leanne Keenans, yeah. who have come on and made a real impact, maybe even the Mel Lawleys, you know, Missy Bo Kern, you know, there's so much strength and depth. Tash Flint, you know she's got a goal in her. So, you know, I don't think there's anything to worry about. And the good thing is it's nil-nil. We're still in the game. Plenty to improve on. No goals to bring you yet. Hopefully that will change in the second half. And we'll bring you that after this short break.
It's about where your dad went. It's about where your grandfather went. It's about a build-up over the years of stories, of sounds, of smells, of memories, which you just simply can't replace anywhere else. That was our manager, and everybody loves him. A lot of time in my life I thought back to this moment. How can a club like Liverpool never have won the cup? You realise just what it meant to people. Nothing is impossible. Things change in football, in life like this. I went through all this and I know what some family is going through, so give them a chance. Every time I played at Anfield, wherever I was with the ball, you like deja vu. Things that flash through your mind in half a second. Shagley was convinced the reason we lost the cup final in 71 was because of the shirts. They said it was like sacks on our back. That was a post jock. You were? Yeah, oh, from definitely. being from Edinburgh. I went out for dinner with Kenny that night and I said to him, I said, look, this is the worst Liverpool side I've ever played in my life. This team's going to win nothing. And that's why I, of course, became a pundit. Liverpool felt very much like the centre of the known universe. And of course, in the midst of all this, you have Bill Shankland, who fed off it the Liverpool kind of arrogance, if you like. What that fan pack gave us, walking down to that ground, there was a belief in absolutely everyone. I just wish I was 25 again, so I have another 10 years, but life doesn't work like that, does it? Welcome back, everybody. Well, they say patience is a virtue, don't they? And I think, to be perfectly honest, that would probably sum up what Liverpool need to do. As I said at the start of this game, folks, Matt Beard was saying all week, he said, look, this is a difficult team to play against them. We've seen evidence of this here. He said, he said to other people, he might think, bottom of the league, yeah, we're going to turn up and it's going to be like Brighton 4-0 again. He said, but... It's not going to be like that. It's a, this, this is a game after the international break. He said, you know, we're going to have to check on the, the full fitness of the players. There's going to be some jaded legs on there after internationals and substitutes, as we said at the start, Natasha Dowie, clearly a, could play a big part today. Yeah, absolutely. I think these are the toughest games to play against, to be honest, Steve, because, you know, Bristol have got nothing to lose. You know, they're the underdogs today. And I think the style of football that we like to play, we like to have space in, to, in behind to exploit with Shanice's pace, but we don't have that today. They're playing a back five, they're making it hard for us, so that's when we actually then are going to have more possession, but probably in front of the Bristol's defence. And that's where we need to be more patient. We need to get our midfield players, like I said earlier, on the ball, creating things and we haven't done that in the first half so we'll see what happens in the second half whether he makes changes to the formation and personnel but we have to lift it because Bristol were really on top in that first half. Yeah it'd be interesting to see whether Beardy keeps the 3-5-2 for this second half. So Sophie Roman Horb the Norway international will have the first touch of the second half last 45 minutes on home turf in 2023 can the Reds send the fans home very happy indeed Hines and an early touch for Tegan Micah Clark Herbinger came in of course from FC Zurich during the summer Marie Herbinger but straight away, you can just tell the intensity is there again from Bristol City with the pressing. You know, we're trying to play out, and all of their players are hunting in packs. Gemma Bonner to the rescue for Liverpool there, but then just to follow through on Emily Simon. Bristol City have a first chance. Gemma Bonner feels the yellow card is harsh, she's been given. Yes, a foul. You know, I was wondering, <laughs> I was wondering why Bonner was throwing her hands up in the air. But you know, yeah, it's a, it's a foul. She swipes the player. She doesn't get the ball. Um, yeah, maybe a yellow card is a little bit harsh. But you know, there's a couple of players now on booking, so 
you know, for both teams. So we have to be aware. And it's a really good position now for Bristol City to, to test us really early in this second half. Yeah, with the set piece. And again, it's the centre back, Megan Connolly, who's going to take the set piece. Yeah, let's hope. Well, let's not hope. But, you know, that first one was it was a really poor execution. So she'll be wanting that it to be a better one for us. I hope it's the same. <laughs> so the Reds have got to be switched on here. Real danger at the start of this second half. Out comes Tegan Mike, got a touch on it. They're bobbling around in there before Emma Coavisto got it away. Ella Powell, it's done well, Powell. Syme. Corner. Yeah, good start by Bristol City again. So whatever was said at half-time, you know, they've come out on the front foot and two early corners, you know, within really two minutes. So again, Liverpool, they just need to be on their game. We know they defend so well. That's why we haven't conceded many goals this season. So we'll be confident that we can defend this corner. So the small travelling band of supporters from Bristol behind that goal, urging their team on. As the corner comes in for Morgan. Liverpool couldn't quite clear it. Eventually, Herbinger half clears it. Van der Sanden there helping out at left back. Van der Sanden again. Nicely done. Coa Visto. Kerry Holland. And accelerate the Wales International. Kerry Holland still after this. Forward by Rogers. And goes Gemma Ponner, but Testrup, good play to get away. Harrison's up there, Grace Fisk to cover. Yeah, Fisk does well in the end there. Abby Harrison, you know, she's got real strength, so she uses her body well. But Testrup does brilliant as well to flick it over and actually, you know, flicks a good ball in. But Liverpool, you know, they're under pressure. You know, Bristol really have started this second half well. You know, they started the second half just how they finished the first. And no surprise right at the start of the second half that Leanne Keane and Melissa Lawley all warming up for Liverpool. It is. That's where Matt Beard earns his money, you know, decision-making. Is he patient? Does he see if maybe next 10, 15 minutes they can get going or does he make those changes early? No, that's why I wouldn't want to be a manager. <laughs> Time. Morgan, deep cross towards Harrison, blocked by Bonner, but early pressure from Bristol City here. And Fionn Morgan is lining this one up again. You know, you fancy us though, when you look at the height difference, you know, I'm actually surprised Bristol City aren't looking to maybe play short and then put the ball in that way. Header away by Jana Clark. Still not cleared properly. There's Van der Sanden from the turn edge of the box, but the pressure is still on from Bristol City. Deep cross by Powell. Real chance here. Abby Harrison. Wicked deflection it's in. Bristol City score. And is that Emily Testrup, the former Liverpool player, the Denmark international, deflects it in. And Bristol City's strong start in this second half is rewarded with the goal. Emily Testrup, of all people. Yeah, you know, I, I wish I'd said I didn't feel it was coming, but I did. You know, three corners within four minutes. You know, they've really started this second half well. You know, and it's a great ball into the box by Ella Powell, the right back for Bristol and, and a Welsh international. And when it fell to Abby Harrison, I was a bit worried, to be honest, because I know she's got one of the, the best and the hardest strikes in the WSL. And actually, she, she completely mishits it. She scuffs it. But then Tester, like any good number nine, right place, right time, you know, for a simple tap in, and that's her fifth goal of the season. You know, so now it's about wake-up calls. And you can already see some players have stripped off. So I think Matt Beard's going to be making the changes within the next few minutes. Yeah, Beardy's going to make the changes. No surprise. 
jaded looking Liverpool after the international break trailing here Bristol City undoubtedly made the strongest start to the second half but here's van der Sanden can Liverpool respond Melissa Lawley will be on shortly she's been a bit frustrated at not starting the last few games Melissa Lawley but she will come on with a real point to prove and Leanne Kiernan coming on as well yeah I think both of them Melissa Lawley I think will be key because she can dribble she can penetrate so she'll be wanting to pick the ball up in pockets and look to run at this Bristol back five and then with Leanne Kiernan her pace in behind she'll run all day long a bit like a test group so I think they're really good changes for, for Liverpool Kiernan been sent out to warm up again though but I think Lawley will be the first one It'll just be interesting to see if he changes the formation and puts Mel Lawley out wide with Leanne Kinnan out wide, maybe Sophie Hall through the middle, or whether he just takes them front two off and then replaces them. Bristol City in front here at Prenton Park. Here's Grace Fisk in behind Sophie Roman Hall. It's a good take with Herbiger coming in by Olivia Clark, but shot might be. Scott Rogers and the White, they would have been saying at half time, look, we've got to test Olivia Clark a lot more here. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a good run by Sophie Hall, but she, really, you want her in the box. She's delivering, and then there's not a number nine in the box. So that's where you have to recognize that she's gone out wide, and we have to replace her and get more bodies in the box. So is this the moment for Melissa Lawley, the ball out of play, to come on for Liverpool here? And it's Emma Coavisto off. Yeah, it looks like they're going to be going for a, potentially a 4-3-3. And yeah, Shanice out wide and then Mel Rawley out wide. Sophie through yeah. the middle, so change of formation for Liverpool. Change of formation. And it's brave. It is brave, but something needs to change. Now, it hasn't been working, so hopefully now we'll have a bit more width and really be able to hurt this Bristol back five. Yeah, it looks like a back four, Grace Fisk at right back. And she has played there before. However, still, of course, it was away with Finland. His side bobbling around the edge of that Liverpool penalty area. Not the best of clearances. This is Amy Rogers. Still Rogers. Test drops in again here. There's Mel Lawley with their first touch. The wing wizard, as the fans call her. A match winner, undoubtedly. Now, Kelly, Kerry Holland to drive for Liverpool here. And the formation change of Matt Beard work. Fuka Nagano. Loose pass, though, by Fuka. And then Grace Fisk will probably go into the book here for a professional foul. Indeed so. Yeah, it's not like Fuka Nagano. She's normally so tidy on the ball. You know, and I think that probably has been through her actually not getting on the ball as much today. I think it's frustration there, and it's a poor set by her, and it's ended up, Grace Fisk has ended up having to make the foul, and, yeah, I think it's, that goal has really shaken Liverpool a little bit, but, yeah, we'll see. Mel, Mel Rawley, someone that she's going to get in those pockets, she's going to look to dribble, she's not a proper out-and-out -out winger, so hopefully she can really impact this game in a positive way. Straight into the box, flick header there by Harrison. Good turn by Herbinger. It's a great ball. Lawley now to run at the fullback. But Ella Powell, Wales international, is a good defender. Yeah, that's the one thing with Ella Powell that Mel Lawley needs to know. She's quick. So Mel needs to really go at her dribbling. You know, take her on there. Don't knock it past her because truthfully, you're not going to beat her pace wise. That's, that's her big strength, is her pace. Bristol City leading here at Prenton Park. Emily Testrup, the former Liverpool forward, with the goal. Leanne Kiernan has been warming up. And Joe Potts is showing it as Holland is trying to link with Van der Sanden. Flicked by Sophie Rowan Hall. Van der Sanden! Oh, that was a chance. That was a chance. That sat up perfectly for the volley. Sophie Hall does brilliant there just to cushion the header down almost makes the header into a pass and Shanice will be absolutely devastated that she hasn't hit the target there you know it's quite poor technique in the end you know set up perfectly for her to volley that but the formation change better looking better going forward here Tash yeah absolutely it is more options more bodies forward Lawley into space for Taylor Hines can she get the cross she can and a goal Sophie Rowan Hall equalises 
Chance for Liverpool. Get the ball in the wide areas. And Sophie Roman Hall, who loves crosses, getting on the end of it, gets Liverpool level. Exactly. No, spot on. It's allowed us to get the likes of Taylor Hines further forward. It's a great cross into the box. It's actually really brave play by the, the striker there, the number 10, Sophie Hall. Because the keeper comes for it, but she just gets across her and it's a nice flick. We know how good she is in the air. So two goals in two games for Sophie Hall. And, you know, great response by Liverpool. It's her third goal of the season. The formation change, working a treat from Matt Bean here. Made the change. Mel Lawley involved in the build-up. Great cross from Taylor Hines with the left foot. And Sophie Roman Hall grabs her third goal of the season. Morgan at the other end, away by Bonner. Good touch by Lawley again. Still Mel Lawley. This is what she gives the team, running at them, creating havoc. Sophie Roman Hogg again, slipping as she tried to slide it in towards Shanice van der Sanden. See some more activity on the bench. Leanne Kiernan is having some tactics from Joe Potts, the goalkeeping coach. She may well be on next. Matt Beard wants to win this game. Yeah, good thing is we've got plenty of time. Great character. And this formation now seems to be suited us better, doesn't it? We look real threat here. Van der Sanden. Yeah, we do. Shanice has come alive getting her out wide on that right she side. She has, and that's where that's her strength. You know, that's where she wants to be, ideally. You know, just the tempo, you can tell it's, it's been lifted. They know that they need to perform better today. And these last five minutes has been really positive. So 1-1, one, one, great spirit amongst this group. And Matt Beard has got... They've shown it by coming from a goal down on a, an indifferent performance. Looking better. Hines, that's a great ball for Sophie Roman Hall. Really unlucky. Yeah, it is. It's a good run. Just over hit it a little bit. Needs to get a bit more whip on it and take the pace off that a bit. But it's good. You know, we're finding those pockets now in between that back five for Bristol City. So giving Bristol City something to think about. To Two players, Lawley, van der Sanden in the wide areas with great pace. And then the full-backs forward. And that's the thing now, with this front three, we're stretching their back five. You know, the full-backs have someone to worry about now, or with the front two, they didn't. And the pull again, Herbinger. She was pulled back there, wasn't she? Well, the fans thought she was. Brilliant by Lawley to win it back. Now, Kerry Holland. Kerry Holland, this is a really good run. And well covered by Connolly. Yeah, she needed to cover that. Connolly there. You know, the defender, Kerry Holland, had the pace of the first defender, and Connolly does well there to almost like a sweeper. Kiernan will be on shortly. Bonner, what an impact Leanne Kiernan made in the last game. And lucky not to score with a great effort against the bar that. <laughs> Me and Tash, when we saw it, it should have been a corner. It was actually a brilliant save to tip it onto the bar and a goal kick was given. But the pace, the direct running of Leanne Keenan. You could see in that last game against Brighton, the confidence returned in the Irish forward. She's had a real tough time of it. Yeah, I think it'll be a like-for-like -like change with Venice. Shanice, with Shanice yeah. Van der Sanden, yeah. and it's unlucky because she's actually really come alive in this second half, but, you know, that's where Matt Beard has so much strength and depth now. Uh, it's hard to get 90 minutes in this team. Hines. Again, though, the, the mere presence of Lawley it is worries Bristol City. You can tell that just someone who is direct and runs at them. And the Reds back in the game at 1-1, thanks to Sophie Roman Hall. Hines. And a full corner. This is good from the Reds. Marie Herbinger to take. Can Gemma Bonner continue her prolific form here? Referee just spotted some pushing going on in that penalty area.
Gemma Bonner says, who me, ref? Definitely not. Oh, can the Austrian international producer telling delivery here for Liverpool? She can, and it's Gemma Clark! That was close. Very close. Looked like he actually just tipped it over, so it's another corner for Liverpool. But Olivia Clark, like you said earlier, we have to be testing her. You know, she didn't do amazing with the goal that we conceded. She didn't come out and dominate. But if we keep putting the balls in and around her, I, I definitely think we're going to get another chance and another goal here. I'm certain Potts here, you know well, the goalkeeping coach does the set plays with a said, look, this is a team that have conceded the most goals from set plays. We have quality. Hervinger with another good delivery. And Sophie Roman Hoog with a glancing header. Yeah, really good spell here for Liverpool. Leanne Keenan waiting patiently, but I'm sure within the next couple of minutes she'll be coming on. And that's another headache for Bristol City. You know, we know Leanne's pace, we know her work rate. So she's definitely a figure that they won't be excited to see coming onto the pitch. Yeah, she's up on her feet now. Beardy's having a few words. If Amber Whiteley's telling the fourth official, so she will be on next. Cross comes Bonner. There's Kerry Holland, Lawley. Still Lawley. Still going, but Bristol trying to win it back. There's Jenna Clark. Great touch, Sophie Roman Hogg. Ooh. What was that, Tash? I thought that was harsh. The referee saying handball, but it looked like it hit the top of her chest there, so. I think that's a poor call by the referee. Two changes for Liverpool coming yep. up. Two changes for Liverpool here. Leanne Kiernan from County Clavan in Ireland. And Bristol goalkeeper Olivier Clark has got an issue. So Marie Herbinger will leave the field here. And Missy Bow, Missy Bow Kearns, the scouser in the team, is coming on for Herbinger, who's been away with Austria on international duty. Missy Bo Kearns has been captaining England under 20. Threes, of course, and Tat's got the substitution spot on. Shanice van der Sanden, straight replacement, really. Leanne Kiernan coming on, the fans' favourite. Yeah, I thought I was a fans' favourite. <laughs> Everyone's a fans' favourite, you, Steve. I'm devastated now, no, I'm only joking. <laughs> no, but you know what? It is. It's much, it's much like for a likeness, you know. I think that Marie Herbinger would have been disappointed she hasn't had more of an impact today you know she was growing into the game though there so she'll probably be a bit disappointed to have come off and then the same obviously you know Shanice second half looked really lively so again it's tough but fresh legs you know and the impacts already from the subs have, have been huge Mel Lawley coming on so let's hope that these two as well really lift us now and get us that second goal and as we were saying before Bristol goalkeeper Olivier Clark had a, a bit of an issue there it looks like she's going to be able to continue yeah, that, they would want that for sure. You know, she's a key player for them. She was actually out on loan at Watford um, due to injuries that brought her back to Bristol. You know, but she's a really important player for them. Well, with Leanne Kiernan on, Missy Bokerns on. She's been so unlucky not to score Missy Bokerns in recent games. And she's on with a point to prove, Tash, because, you know, she'll be disappointed. She's not a regular in the WSL so far this season. She's still a young player with a, certainly a very bright future. That's the thing that I've been most impressed with, with with the subs that have come on. You know, they're not sulking that they're not playing. They're actually coming on, wanting to make that impact to get them into this starting eleven. And it's the same with Mel Lawley, you know, Missy Bow, who's used to playing week in, week out last season. You know, Leanne Keenan, who's been out for so long with injuries. All these players now will be desperate to get a starting spot. But it's not going to be easy. So 1 1 here at Prenton Park in the Barclays Women's Super League. Megan Connolly. Forward it goes. Good header by Bonner. Jenna Clark this time. Fisk. Keenan, first touch.
fans there probably had a better view than us and they're frustrated the Reds didn't get it. Yeah, I think Leanne Kinnan and the fans did, but the line obviously saw something else. But the game really has spiced up this second half. It's been a lot better. It's a bit of a flat, flat affair in the first half, but these first 15 minutes or so have been really lively by both teams. Liverpool put great pace in the wide areas. But a chance here for Bristol City. What a save by Tegan Micah to deny Abby Harrison. Big chance for Lauren Smith's side. And then an unbelievable block. Huge chance. Ball into the box again and falls to them. And Abby Harris first two is his strong. And Tegan Micah, what a save. You know, real good save. Gemma Bonner done a bit there pace wise, but that's a brilliant save there. And Taylor Hines, brilliant reactions. Huge defending there by Liverpool. And Bristol City still showing that there's uh, still a real threat, Ash. Got to be careful here as Fionn Morgan with the corner kick. From the half clear corner kick that they scored the first goal. Hand ball appeals in there, waved away. Liverpool trying to force them back. Napier, good challenge by Fuka Nagano. Liverpool free kick. Yeah, a lot of hands in the air there for a handball. Referee obviously didn't see that, but again, Bristol, the momentum has swung a little bit. Liverpool were on top. Now Bristol are finding a little bit of momentum here. Taylor Hines. Mel Lawley. Fisk, Keenan. Sophie Roman Hogg getting Liverpool level great cross from Taylor Hines after Emily Testrup, the former Liverpool player, had done well to deflect an effort into the back of the net after a strong start from the away side in the second half. Forward by Missy Bo Kearns. <laughs> Still, it, it's that word patience you keep thinking of, Tash, isn't it? That Matt Beard has said right at the start. It is, and I also think maybe actually conceding the goal woke us up a little bit because since we did concede it, then the change of formation, personnel had to change, and now we've come alive. Bonner. Sophie Roman Hall, good. Lawley running at them. She's got Keenan back post. Lawley might not need anybody. Doing it alone. Still Mel Lawley. Missy Bo Kearns is in there. No, it's great. Mel Lawley really has had a big impact. And like I said, with the front three now, that back five has three players to worry about, not just two. You know, and then obviously because we're keeping so wide with the likes of Leanne Keen and Amel Lawley, we're stretching that back five. So then Sophie Hall's getting more space in the middle. The likes of Missy Bow as well. Test drop. Fisk coming across. Got to be careful, Grace, because she's got a yellow card, don't forget. Well played, Fuka Nagano. Lawley. Fisk. Now it right back. Fuka Nagano. Nice space for Taylor Hines. Deep cross. Booted away by Connolly. Can Missy Bo Kearns get that loose ball? She can. Fuka Nagano. He's getting in a lot more advanced spaces since Herbing has gone off now. And Fuka beginning to pass the ball into good areas. Good work by Keenan. Unlucky. It's a bit more like the focal point now, Fuka Tats, isn't she? Offside. Absolutely, and I think that's key. You know, I think it's it's having to get that balance of them two playing together. But I think when Marie is on the pitch, they look for her a lot more than they do Fuka. Now that she's not on the pitch, Fuka's getting on the ball a lot more. So Bristol City making a change, and Abby Harrison will leave the field and Marie Ward 
is going to come on. Yeah, I think she might have injured herself quite badly, Abby. You know, yeah. she was doing a sprint earlier, and it's either she's either pulled her calf or a hamstring because she was really struggling them last 30 seconds. And don't forget, she nearly scored, but for a wonder save, really, from Tegan Micah. So much still finely balanced. Don't forget, folks, more live football coming your way on Wednesday night. It's the Continental Cup. Last game, great game for a derby. Everton-Liverpool We're live for that one for you. 7 o'clock kick-off and Liverpool legend Becky Easton. When we need her, she'll be there, as the fans always used to say. Love that. Great to have her with us on Wednesday night. 7 o'clock kick-off that one, folks. Both teams can't qualify, but playing for pride, undoubtedly. It's a derby. Yeah. Best games. Live on our social channels for that one on Wednesday night. So join us. But Liverpool here. Making them changes, still trying to be patient. There's still time to get a winner, although got to be careful as well at the other end of Bristol City counter-attacks. Yeah, I think what I'm going to find really fascinating is, you know, the closer this game gets last 15, 10 minutes, Will Bristol City be, be looking to get that win, or actually a point away at Liverpool? Is that a good point? You know, would they then bank up? But I can only see them trying to go for the three points, just like Liverpool will. Ward, let's just come on. Oh, Jenna Clark couldn't quite clear it. Real chance for Ward, the substitute. Brilliant tackle, Missy Bokerns. Had to be. As Fionn Morgan was in. doing what midfield players need to do you can't just go forward you have to do your defensive responsibilities well so very good by her could missy bow get the winner tash it's her month isn't it because the fans sing a song to a well-known christmas song the old shabby alonso on the Local midfield maestro. It's a sign then, isn't it? You know, she's been really unlucky. She'll be desperate to get on the score sheet. She scored some crucial goals last year for Liverpool. Just hasn't fallen for her or happened for her yet this season. Missy Bocairn's in the vicinity of that penalty area there, trying to put pressure on the keeper. Still got to keep playing. Don't let your heads drop. Look what happened with the first team, that late, late, late show yesterday. Yeah, we know in this Liverpool team we've got goals in us, so there's no need to panic. You know, even if it's the 89th minute stoppage time, we'll create something and we'll score a goal. Good run here by Kerry Holland. Good unfortunate. Good challenge, to be fair, from Naomi Lazelle. Sixteen minutes to go in this final home game of the calendar year, the last game in the WSL of 2023, next Sunday away to Manchester United. We and that's don't. the thing as well, Steve, you know, we've got United next, so really we're favourites here. You have to be beating Bristol City at home, you know, especially if we're wanting to keep with that top four pack. You know, we're in a great position right now, but for me, this game is a must win today. And we should have beaten Manchester United in the Conti Cup. Unlucky, weren't they? Yep. Definitely, and with a lot of changes as well. This comes Bonner. Good take by Tegan Micah. Here's Fuka Nagano. Bonner. Jenna Clark. Fisk. I also have to say they've been well organised, Bristol City at the back, especially missing a key player in Brooke Aspen. Yeah, they've got a few key players out. You know, Kerry Jones, Welsh International out with concussion. You know, they've got quite a few injuries. So they're doing really well so far. 75 minutes, 1-1 against a team like Liverpool who are flying. 
Bonnet over the top for Sophie Roman Hall to chase. Offside, I think, has been given. Yeah, just needs to be aware of that. It's really important as a, as a number nine that when the team are under pressure, you get yourself back on side. You know, do your hard work and then you can rest. And Natasha Flint today, unfortunately, to come off the bench. Got a slight knock keeping her out. Oh, that's a real shame. You know, because she's probably someone ideal. Like five, ten minutes ago, big, powerful centre forward. You know, when she gets a chance, nine times out of ten, she scores it. So that is a shame. Morgan. Ward. Napier. So they've got to be careful, Liverpool, here with Bristol City dangerous on these attacks. They're still going for it themselves. Jenna Clark defending there against Testrup. Liverpool free kick for the offside. I think as well, which you've got to give credit to Bristol, is they really struggled at the start of the season, leaking a lot of goals. But over the last few weeks, I feel like they're slowly getting used to playing in this WSL and, and the quality and tempo of the league. Bonner, Taylor Hines, Is there still one more big chance left in the game for Liverpool, not really been able to get Leanne Keenan into it yet, have they, with a clear run down that right side. That's a great point, Steve, to be honest, I, I completely forgot she had come on just because we haven't been able to get her involved. Normally straight away she has an impact we've got that space but again it is due to just the way Bristol are playing really nullifying that space in behind for us to attack and I think that's been the biggest problem all game so 1-1 one, one, Sophie Roman Hogg with her third goal of the season the former AS Roma striker and talking of Leanne Keenan just picked up a little knock there hopefully she's okay yeah maybe a little knock to the face nosebleed It's a big last 10 15 minutes. It's huge. It is for Liverpool FC women. Can they keep at it? Get that one big chance to get the winner. Yeah, all it takes is one moment, one chance to score a goal. So I think both teams will feel like this game is there to be won, and it's just who can create that moment and then have the, the composure and the quality to finish it off. Pat Beer just calling a squad for one last final instructions. It appears from that, the sign language, as if he's suggested, like you've been saying, just get the ball over the top of them, get it into the wide areas. Absolutely. Look, we've got a number nine now that loves the ball in the air. You know, that is Sophie Hawke's strength. So we've got two wide players now in, in Kiernan and in Lawley. Get the ball out wide to them, get crosses into the box, test, you know, Clark in goal, you know, and those opportunities will come. But we need to get ourselves in those positions, 2v1s out wide. Taylor Hines also getting crossed into the box. You know, the likes of Fisk as well now at right back. That needs to happen more. I don't think Leanne Kiernan's going to be OK. As you say, just got a little facial knock there and patched up. I wonder if Leanne might be in line to get her first start of the season in the Conti Cup against Everton Wednesday. Wouldn't be a surprise. Maybe give her an hour. Lawley just trying to switch it inside to Taylor Hines, but well read again by Bristol City and Mustaki. Up to a goalkeeper and Sophie Roman Hall tried to put her under pressure. Back in by Kerry Holland. Away again by Mustaki. Keenan back on. Bristol City trying to launch another counter with Amelie Testrup, who got their first goal. There's Bonner and Janna Clark to clear. Trying to get in behind here with Morgan. Dangerous, good take by Tegan Micah. Yeah, very strong hands there. Actually, a decent cross by Morgan, but Tegan Micah reads it well near post. Clean hands, plays out nice and quick, allows Liverpool to start another attack. 
Holland. Just a bit loose from Gemma Bonner. Nine minutes to go. There's still time, Tash Dowie. There is plenty of time. You know, there'll be stoppage time as well. So, yeah, the word of the day, patience. Keep it moving, but keep it moving quickly. You know, no slow, slow passes. Switch it along the back. Get this Bristol team moving. By the looks of it as well, there's going to be another change. I can see Matt Beard talking to a figure on the bench so it wouldn't surprise me maybe Lucy Parry you know she's done great when she's come on at full back good crosses into the box as well she's someone that can put some good balls into the box that's a good shout there very much an attacking full back Lucy Parry and Jenna Clark defending well there against Testrup yeah I think that's something that maybe we've lacked a little bit is that kind of quality from crosses into the box so it looks like Sophie Sophie Lungard might be coming on in midfield so you know another one that probably has had limited game time so she'll want to have an impact she's, she's quite an aggressive midfield player and maybe Lucy Parry as well looks like she's been looking at the set pieces with Joe with Potsy so Matt Beard looking to find a way to win but still defending to do here but Keenan gets back Leanne Keenan again on for Sophie Roman Hall to chase Kerry Holland bursting forward as well. Sign. And Lawley will get it. Hines. Lawley again. Holland. And Missy Bogan in behind them. Oh, just asked a bit too much. It's not been out there usual fluency have we today no we haven't it's going to be interesting to see the changes though who comes off for sophie you know kerry holland is a massive player for matt b she doesn't normally come off so maybe he's going to gamble and take fuka off you know and go a bit more attack minded and then probably put parry on for fisk at right back you get a driving forward yet get another cross in the box because the only cross really we've got into the box all afternoon resulted in the goal absolutely Fisk, Missy Bokerns, Clark. Morgan will get there first. Bonner just trying to hold her up. Test drop in the middle. Now Fuka Nagano. Hines, Lawley, it's a clever ball, Keenan in behind them now, but the flag denies Liverpool. Oh, that was tight, very tight, great ball by Mel Lawley, I actually wanted Leanne to hit that first time, but again, we're finding those spaces, we're stretching that back five. Yeah, Kerry Holland off, and maybe Grace Fisk off, yeah. So Lucy Parry on for Grace Fisk at right back. And Sophie Lungard, the Denmark under 21 international, coming on for Kerry Holland. Yeah, that just shows the competition. You know, these players, Kerry Holland was a 90 minute week in, week out player for Liverpool last season, same as Missy Bo Kearns. And that just shows now the amount of players that Matt Beer's got in his squad. You know, competition for places, it is it's big. So, yeah, let's see if these substitutions now can have an impact. You know, in these last 10 minutes of the game. She looks a bit frustrated, Kerry Holland, there, but it's tough, as we say, these games after the international break. She's been playing a lot of football for Wales yeah, as well. Yeah, she has, but you know what? She didn't start for Wales, actually, when she was away, so she's probably actually a bit gutted that, you know, she's come off today. She's probably just wanting to play and to have an impact. And it's always hard, isn't it, when it's 1-1, one, one, you know, you want to be the player to win it for your team. I know what that's like sometimes as a number nine, maybe when you get taken off with five, ten minutes to go. But, you know, there's players now with fresh legs that want to have an impact as well. So, Mr. City making a change. Fionn Morgan replaced by Shania Hales, the ex-Aston Villa former. Hines. 
is Hales with a first touch. Lively number nine. Test drop. Chance here for Bristol City. Hales was in there after just coming on. She wasn't that far away, Tess. I tell you what, what a ball by Testrup. You know, that's a number nine street and that's a tap-in, so she'll be really furious that no one's got on the end of that there. It's a perfect area and just inches away from someone getting on the end of it. At the moment, it's Bristol City who are certainly ending the strongest, aren't they, Tess? Looking yeah, the more are. lively. Yeah, this second half, momentum has swung. You know, Bristol came out flying, then Liverpool got their goal and had a real strong period, but now Bristol are on top again. Let's hope Liverpool can change that narrative, you know, and finish strongest the last five, ten minutes. And Bristol City on the attack again here with Ward. Dangerous cross. Bonner was there. And away by Lucy Parry, Liverpool's youngest ever player, of course, Lucy. Fuka Nagano couldn't quite clear it. And in the end, Marie Ward with a chance. Yeah, half a chance there. Good effort. Picks up the second balls. First of the second balls there and has a swing for it, but doesn't really ever challenge Tegan Micah in goal. But you'd probably say a draw would be fair today, to be honest, Steve. I think both teams, you know, have kind of cancelled each other out pretty well. If anything, maybe Bristol have been the stronger team in, in bigger periods. Parry, determined run by the youngster, Lucy Parry, it's a bit unfortunate in the end, but you've got to give Bristol City credit, they've got men, players behind the ball quickly to nullify the space, it's not been easy. It's been a game full of niggly fouls as well, hasn't it, Tash? It has been. You know, it's been a, it's been a feisty game. It's been tasty. You know, you can tell that Bristol City are desperate for points, and you can also then tell on the flip side that Liverpool are desperate to stay at that top half of the table, you know, stay with that top four pack, especially with the likes of Chelsea dropping points today, getting beat by Arsenal. You know, it's really important that you win your home games, especially against a team that are bottom of the league. So still a dangerous situation here with Bristol City having a free kick themselves here. Two, less than two minutes of normal time remaining. Jenna Clark win it against Hale, she can. Forward by Missy Bokerns. Well, whatever was said at half-time by both managers, it's definitely worked because this second half has been completely different to the first half. Really entertaining. I'm certain that Beardy maybe remains 1-1 here. I and mean, as we always say, a point is better than nothing. So you take that when you've not been at your best. And undoubtedly, Liverpool have not been at their best today. That is very fair to say. Credit to Bristol City, they've made it difficult, but is there still one big chance for Liverpool to create? And I'm sure the manager will be probably disappointed with the amount of passes they've given away. It's another niggly foul, this time from Sophie Lungard. Yeah, that's frustration, that by Sophie Lungard. She hasn't touched the ball really since she's come on. Gave the ball away a minute ago, and she's frustrated with herself there, so she's just completely swiped the player. Tash, there's still seven minutes. Plenty of time. You know, I think that's that's good for both teams. You know, By the looks of it, Bristol City aren't happy with a point here. They want the three points. But then Liverpool as well has plenty of time to create a couple of opportunities. Yeah, so seven minutes of added on time. Connolly again with the free kick. She slipped actually, but then Amy Rogers trying to pick up the loose ball. Good play by Lawley. Now Keenan. Can she launch a counter? Brilliant by Lucy Parry that. Keenan again. Taylor Hines. Mel Lawley. Just been one of those.
those days when just things haven't quite gone right, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, just little balls haven't dropped to us or like exactly what you said, Steve, to be honest. And you have some of those days, you know, we've been playing some good football, getting some good results. But sometimes you're just going to have maybe a little bit of an off day or come up against an opponent like Bristol who have had a really good game today. They've made it hard for us. You've got to give credit to Bristol for that. Missy Bo Kearns did well there. Hines. Hales. Wriggling away. There's Fuka Nagano winning it back for Liverpool. Missy Bo Kearns. Keep the ball moving. That's it. Still time. Deeper to stoppage time. Lucy Parry. It's a good ball over the top to Sophie Longard. That's an interesting ball. Sophie Roman Hogg in the penalty area. Yeah, I think that's what they'll be looking to do now. A little bit of not desperation, but now we just need to try and get the ball into the box. And we saw yesterday the first team left it late to win at Crystal Palace. Sophie Roman Hogg. They see Poe Kearns on the outside. Clark. Bonner. Gemma Bonner again. Matt Beard urging his side forward. Fuka Nagano. Taylor Hines did well to keep that in, to be fair. It wasn't a great pass. Lawley, Missy Bo Kearns. Trying things here, Liverpool, late on. Trying to stretch them, trying to find an opening. Can they get it? As I say, folks, in this, the final home game of the calendar year. Hines, Missy Bo Kearns. Trying to run in behind. Nicely done. Now Mel Lawley, can she produce a moment of magic? Wasn't far away. Inches away. No, that is where you want to find Mel. You know, when she's at pace, at speed, dribbling. You know, no one wants to touch her in the box. And Sophie Hawke's there, and it's inches away. Good defending there by Bristol City. And as we know, Tats, in the past, Missy Bo Kearns can produce a good delivery. Can she get one now? Keeper spilled it there, Bonner was in there. Here's Hines. Good play, Taylor Hines. Sophie Lundgaard crowded out. Missy Bo Kearns goes for it. Good save. What a save. What a strike by Missy Bo Kearns. She hits that so well. And I thought actually the keeper was caught off a little bit there. She didn't look like she got off the floor, but she does just enough to pass. She keeps getting denied by Wildey. Saves at the moment, Missy Bowe. She Bo. does. It just won't go in for her at the moment. Can Missy Bow produce another decent delivery? Deep into stoppage time. Low towards Bonner at the near post. It's another corner. As we say, we keep saying against the team who've conceded the most goals from set pieces so far in the WSL this season. Can Liverpool's persistence pay off right at the end? Another Missy Bo Kearns delivery. Oh, unlucky. Space now, Fuka Nagano. Good delivery needed. Bonner's up there. And it's hooked forward there. What a way. What a great ending to the game. It really is. It's great to see. You know, no one's happy with the point today. Both teams throwing bodies at it, balls into the box, defending for their lives, Bristol City right now. Is it going to be just a bit too little, too late for Liverpool? Oh, she was so unlucky, Missy Bow there. It's a really good effort. Oh, great kick by the goalkeeper. She got away with it, really. Lucy Parry battling away. 
and it will be a Bristol City throw in. And there probably won't be in any great hurry to take this in the final minute of the seven of stoppage time. And Sophie Roman Hogg with the on quality cross we've got into the box all day. And the Norwegian responded by getting on the end of a great delivery from Taylor Hines. It's just been not been enough of them. And I'm certain Matt Beard will say that, you know, he said before in commentary, that's the strength of Sophie Roman Hall. We just haven't managed to get enough quality balls into that box today. We just haven't been able to create enough chances. Exactly that. When we get chances, we score chances. But today, really, that's the only chance that we've created for our forwards, and that's not enough. Taylor Hines, some good composed play. Kiernan, can she get that loose ball back? Yes, she can. Well done. Bonner, this really is last chance saloon to find a late, late winner. Tegan Micah, out towards Lucy Perry. Lucy Bow makes a run. Parry again. Crunching challenge coming in on Missy Bo Cairns. Just depends how long the referee wants to add on. 1-1. One, one. Sophie Roman Hogg. And that's how it stays. A frustrating one in many ways after the international break. But if you can't win, take a point. Keep the momentum going. In the end, Missy Bokens almost won it late, late show with a great effort. Brilliant save by Olivia Clark. But you can see there the Bristol team and their manager, Lauren Smith, delighted with the performance of their players. Matt Beard was under no illusions. He said, this is going to be tough, this one, today. Bristol in front through Emily Testrup. But Liverpool equalised. Great cross from Taylor Hines. And the equaliser from Sophie Roman Hogg. It finished. Liverpool won. Bristol City won. It's about where your dad went. It's about where your grandfather went. It's about a build-up over the years of stories, of sounds, of smells, of memories, which you just simply can't replace anywhere else. That was our manager, and everybody loves him. A lot of time in my life I thought back to this moment. How can a club like Liverpool never have won the cup? you realize just what it meant to people. Nothing is impossible. Things change in football, in life like this. I went through all this and I know what some family is going through, so give them a chance. Every time I played at Anfield, whatever I was with the ball, you like deja vu. Things that flash through your mind in half a second. Shagley was convinced the reason we lost the cup final in 71 was because of the shirts. They said it was like sacks on our back. That was a posh jock. You were? Yeah, oh, from, being from Edinburgh. I went out for dinner with Kenny that night and I said to him, I said, look, this is the worst Liverpool side I've ever played in my life. This team's going to win nothing. And that's why I, of course, became a pundit. Liverpool felt very much like the centre of the known universe. And of course, in the midst of all this, you have Bill Shankly, who fed off it, the Liverpool kind of arrogance, if you like. 
what that fan pack gave us. Walking down to that ground, there was a belief in absolutely everyone. I just wish I was 25 again, so I have another 10 years, but life doesn't work like that, does it? There's the cross. Lovren! Yes! The roof has come oh! up on field! It comes to Lallana! Oh, no, I don't believe it. Clops off. The players are off. The most ridiculous game of football that you will ever see. Top three. Chamberlain! Stunning moment. Stunning hit. What a night. What a hero. What an arrival in a red shirt. Here's Firmino again. And still going on, Firmino! Oh, that's absolutely wonderful! It's Alexander Arnold! Absolutely emphatic! Fabinho with the strike! Oh, my word! Mane chasing, lovely take, lawyers come. And Mane's turned in! And Sadio Mane for Liverpool! With a brilliant away goal! Shakiri. One end to the other. Unbelievable first half. Oh, Pickford's lost it. David Carigi. Unbelievable. Jürgen Klopp can't believe it. David Carigi. He's won the European Cup for Liverpool. Number six. He's on its way to Anfield. It doesn't get any better than this. Liverpool, the champions of Europe. Here's Salah, he's got a run on goal, he's still going, and Salah for Liverpool! Have a little bit of that! Liverpool Football Club are champions of England once again. It's Alexander, oh it's Alisson! Unbelievable! It's absolutely astonishing! You will never see such drama again! Well, the second half was certainly entertaining. Ultimately, Liverpool will probably be disappointed with it. We did have that added on time at the end, and it was dramatic, but a share of the spoils. Liverpool won, Bristol City won, is how it finished here at Prenton Park today. Uh, Tasha Dowie was, of course, watching it with Steve Hunter. We've got Paul McHugh with us as well, uh, former assistant manager to Matt Beard, who's going to join us uh, very shortly to tell us what he made of the overall afternoon. But let's start with you, Matt. What will... What do you predict he will say? Will he be disappointed that it's it's just a point? I think at half time you'd have been disappointed. I think you'd have you'd have said some positive things that they need to do better. Um, maybe keep the ball more, stop giving it away. Um, but overall, he, he, the second half is it was like a different game mm. for both teams. To be fair, and it come to an end and end game where whoever's going to get that that next goal could possibly win it or draw it as it was. It, it was a 1-1 at the end. And they were the key things that they improved on second half that he will ultimately be a lot happier with. Yeah, I think, to be honest, I think Bristol scoring woke us up a little bit and actually then led to change of formation, which I think suited us a lot better. The 4-3-3, I think we stretched the Bristol City's back five a lot more. Then Sophie Hall got a bit more freedom in that middle. Then obviously with like some Missy Bow coming into that number 10. We just found a lot more space. I thought Mel Lawley did great when she mm. came on, really dribbled, drived, caused some dangerous... Um, situations, but just a bit too little, too late. And overall, I think a fair result. I think Bristol were brilliant today, yeah. really thoroughly deserved a point. Certainly came to win, didn't they? Which, yeah, you know, made be. it into the spectacle it yeah. was. Yeah, 100%. I think they had a philosophy in the mind where they're thinking, we're not just going to turn up, we're going to battle for everything we can, and we're going to put Liverpool under pressure. And I think they, they achieved that. Mm. Um, on Liverpool perspective, the different team in the second half, um, which was positive, but the changes made a massive difference for me. I think it stretched them. 
rather than having two up front, it went to three up front and it made a massive difference. Yeah. Mm. That's been it every week, up. hasn't it? The yeah. subs have every week and I think it's good and bad because you don't want to always have to rely on the subs to come on and have that impact to change the game. I think Matt Beard will probably be really frustrated with the first half. I think if this Liverpool team had been performing like they had done against Brighton, this game shouldn't have been a draw. You know, it should have been a comfortable result in my opinion. But, you know, after international break, it's never easy. It's tough. How difficult is that when you don't start the way you want to start to almost crunch through the gears to get to a point where we, we had that second half? It's really hard, and especially when the opposition are playing so well. You know, it's like in the warm-up, you know, if you're not scoring goals, if your touch is a little bit off, you tend to then start the game like that. And I think that was the case with Liverpool. Too many players were just off their game. And, you know, when one or two or three are, that's too many, you know, and credit to Bristol. They really took advantage of that. It's so, Sorry, it's getting the basics right. If you're under pressure, you need to get them basics right. Mm -hmm. So the first pass, your movement, can you make sure that everyone's switched on to because it might be going it might be a run that comes in but then the spin so that second player has to get beyond that and it's just it's the dynamics that needs to be really grasp that straight away can we do a job straight away if it doesn't go right go back to basics do that easy pass return it come back come out the other side because the more times you have touches on the ball the more confident you feel yeah. it's proven that there's no easy games in this division no, we were speaking no about way. it at the start when they did yeah, struggled no. a little bit Bristol City but this they'll take huge yeah, amounts yeah. of confidence from this yeah. 100%. Yeah, well, it's huge. It really is, you know, and, and they've come here today fully expecting to get points. And, you know, I think that, like I said earlier, they deserve that. But it is. This is it's not a wake up call for Liverpool. But I think now Liverpool aren't the new team in this league anymore where people probably expect to beat them. They're the team now that's actually pushing for that, you know, to get into that top four. So when teams are coming up against Liverpool now, they're up in their game 10, 15 percent. And, and then we have to do that as well. Mm. And he's uh, he's walking over now, I think, to, uh, to join us. Matt, would you like to come and join us? The manager of, uh, of Liverpool? Pool. Um, give us your first emotion at the end of that. It was certainly a game of two halves, wasn't it? That just, we was we was off it today. Um, we was too many touches on the ball. Didn't move off the ball quick enough. Um, and I think we were lucky to get a point. To be honest with you, I, I should have changed it at half time to the four three three. But um, we, we we had a lot of space in the build, and there was a lot of space in behind. But we just didn't move the ball quick enough or get high enough up the pitch. And um, I think Bristol deserved something out of that today, definitely. So it's disappointing for us because these games are tough sometimes. Like it was a different, different game to Brighton, but we just we just wasn't at the races today. So we, we need to make sure we learn from that, though, because you said to them at the end there, you don't have a divine right to win football matches. You have to earn the right. And unfortunately for us today, we got outworked. First ball, second balls, tackles, crosses going in the box, not stopping them. And that's, that's their threat, set plays, crosses, shoot from distance, and we just didn't do it well enough. The changes made a difference, didn't they? And, uh, yeah. and you say they maybe it should have come a little bit e earlier, but you'd be pleased with that, the, the impact the players made. Yeah, no, definitely. Listen, like, if you can't win it, you need to make sure you get a point. And I think we, we can learn a lot from today. I thought Mel had a, a great impact in the game. Um, she's a different type of winger because she can get in the pocket, she can turn, she can drive with the ball. Um, so, yeah, I was, just, I was pleased with the changes, but uh, disappointed with the overall performance. Yeah, I think it's an honest opinion, Beardy. I was going to say in the first half, I felt like potentially we didn't get our midfield players on the ball as much. You know, you, the likes of Marie, who's had such a massive impact for you this season, and even Fuka. You know, Brist credit to Bristol, the way they set up, but were you frustrated with that, how your midfield players couldn't get on the ball as much maybe but it was the extra touch that killed us especially when we went, when we went wide it could have gone in first time or we was having three touches before this gone then that pass has gone um, and listen we, we have a set structure of playing and we say to the players you have freedom because pitches change you know they've they've been in a 5-4-1 most of the season they've been in a diamond out of possession on goal kicks and when we changed it, we dropped Fuka a bit deeper to try and get the tens on. But we just wasn't brave enough with the passes, I think, getting into that into the midfield players. But um, look, as I say, sometimes you have to credit the opposition, but we just let ourselves down in, in little moments today. Yeah, and I was going to say that as well. I think that I think the most disappointing thing probably today was the amount of chances you created because when you do create chances, nine times out of ten you score them, and the one chance you did create, <laughs> getting it out wide, you scored from. So I think watching it, that was the frustrating thing for me is that you know how good Sophie Hogg is in the air. Like, why do you think it was that we maybe couldn't create as many chances today? We kept going into the numbers. Instead of playing round, you know, we, we get it into the centre-back and she's got space to drive into. But the full-back's coming underneath, it's going in, then it's going back. So, 
you know, if you if we play on the outside of them and we get bodies in the box, because first half we didn't have enough bodies in the box, and we showed showed a clip at half time of where we've broken their press, end up getting it wide. I think it was four passes and had two bodies in the box, and I think that sort of summed up our performance today. But look what happens when we do get our bodies in the box, we're getting crossing positions, and uh, as I say, we're, we're trying to play through players when you've got a big a, a bank there, when you can go round it and put the ball in the box, but we didn't do it well enough today, and as I say, look, if, we just have to take that one on the chin and learn from it. We've got your trusted uh, former lieutenant with us as well, he's been <laughs> dying to give some instructions, what have you got for him? So when you made the first substitutions, your, was your reasoning just to stretch the player, or could you elaborate on that? I should have done it half time, Maka, to be honest with you. Um, we, we felt we'd give it five more minutes, but killed us, didn't it, because they scored. So, um, yeah. yeah, no, we wanted. The, the width was where, where we was going to beat them today. They're vulnerable from defending crosses. Yeah. Um, but even when we made the change, we did it well for about a five, ten minute period. Then we started forcing it or we started yeah. going back. But yeah, it was, it was just to try and stretch them. And especially with people like Mel and Leanne. Um, getting in the wide areas and they're good 1v1. Yeah. And I think the frustrating thing is for the players and yourself is when you get the ball, don't give it away cheaply because then you have to just come and tuck in again and it just breaks the momentum, doesn't it? And of course it does. I think for me it's, uh, it's the extra touch. Yeah, that, that, That's what's killed us today. Like we showed a clip where Bonner was driving out with the ball. It could have gone into Fuka on the second touch, but she drove out. Then we've not reacted to that. We've stayed in the same positions. It was them little things that, which we have been really good at this year. You know, if I look at the Brighton game, look at the Arsenal game when we, you know, we, we, we're brave with our movement. We could have got Fisky up higher. We could have pushed Taylor up higher. Um, but... Communication sometimes, you know that, is, has been a bit of an issue for us at times. But, um, yeah, no, as I say, it, the extra touch kills it and, and then the chance has gone to pass it. Just finally, you've got another game to, to manage midweek. This is the period now, isn't it? You've got a, a cup game Wednesday. It's about managing minutes, managing legs, see how, how everybody is when they return to Melbourne tomorrow. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's been a frustrating schedule, you know, November, December. Six games in 22 days, four international games, and then you get another three games in seven days. It's, um, it's tough, yeah, but listen, we, we utilise the squad again on Wednesday. We give minutes into players in, in the cup game. Um, you know, the league have always said this year's our priority. We want to, you know, break into that top five, and I think we've got a great chance of doing that this year. So that's why today was so frustrating because we could have kept in touch with that that top three, that top four, um, especially with United and Tottenham playing each other. But yeah, no, look, one of them things today. We've just got to regroup and just continue with, with what we're doing. We'll get the spare bedroom made up. Mac is going to come and raise your spirits tonight. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, mate. Matt Beard, the, uh, the manager of uh, Liverpool Women. And we're going to take a quick break here, take a look at the, uh, the clips and a bit of that analysis when we come back. This is Bobby.
One time português. Conquistamos toda a Europa. Nós nunca vamos parar. De Paris até Turquia. Temos ganhado muito. Mas Bob Pans de Bir Jungle. Nos campos da estrada do Afield. Somos apoiadores fiéis. Yeah, not too many smiles in that Liverpool dressing room. You wouldn't imagine at the moment more replaced by grimaces because maybe an opportunity missed uh, for the Liverpool women here today. Finished at 1-1. Uh, Natasha Dowie's with us, Paul McHugh, the former assistant manager of Matt Beard as well. Uh, let's take a look through some of the action from uh, that first half. And I suppose you might say that the Bristol City felt it was coming, that goal, certainly in the first first half they, they created some decent chances more often than not from set plays yeah absolutely you know they had a few half chances in the first half and would probably be really disappointed that they couldn't capitalize you know on those moments in the first half and you know when they came out in the second half they were so strong you know I think they had three corners within the first three minutes but here if you look at the chances they were scrapping for everything and I think this sums up the whole 90 minute game you know first balls second balls you know they really didn't give Liverpool any time they made half chances into good chances is here it's just a long ball but they're first to it you know they're on to the seconds here keeping it alive you know working it out again recycling it putting balls back into the box again a bit of a hopeless ball but look they're on the end of it and they really made Liverpool work for their money today to, to get a point did you have a feeling that the goal was coming Paul from a, an opposition perspective yeah I did I, I think looking at the first half they were putting anything that was in the in the half of the second half they were just putting it in the box and everyone was trying to battle for it but it was more often they were getting on top of it and it was i thought it could have been like could be one more nil before half time to mm. be fair i'm being honest and that's the thing as well i think when no disrespect to bristol where they are bottom of the league you know they're, they're scrappers, you know, and, and sometimes actually playing against teams like that where they have to play a bit nasty, a bit dirty, you know, that's harder than playing yeah. against maybe a Man City that want to get the ball down, want to play. You know, against the Bristols, they know that they're going to have to just make that your life hell, and they mm. did that today. Uh, let's take a look at the, the goal. When it did come, it was bound to be a former Liverpool player that got the goal, wasn't it? Always the way, isn't it? And again, they started the second half so well. And again, it's a ball, a kind of helpless ball into the box, but they're first to it. Second balls, second balls, they're first to it. And again, test strip, this is what a good number nine does here you know she's in the right place right time she's always alive look at her looking for those balls and to be fair it's a great finish actually from up there I didn't even notice that she back heeled it there so credit to her I thought it was a tapping but that is brilliant improvisation to actually back heel that with with the outside of her foot there into the goal and you know that's her fifth goal of the season now in a team that's bottom of the league you know so credit to her and she'll truthfully there's no better feeling than scoring against one of your old teams so she would have loved that moment yeah she enjoyed that what a touch it was as well to finish it off in the, um, in the right place at the right absolutely. time. Absolutely, that's what strikers are for. That's why they absolutely. get paid the big bucks. <laughs> um, where the changes came, Paul, as well, he, he admitted before Matt Beard they maybe should have come a little bit earlier, but Mel Lawley coming on sparked things and, and yeah. Venice, uh, the, uh, Venice <laughs> van der Sand, it's cold, uh, yeah. almost got uh, uh, the goal back. It was a, it was a tremendous effort on goal. Yeah, I think I think a technique just let her down a little bit. I think as it come over, she just needs to get over it and hit it because I, she just... I mean, she didn't get on target, if I'm being honest. No, she snatches be, at it, doesn't yeah, she? And it's she, great. This is what Sophie Hall does so well. She makes a header into a pass, cushions it down here, and actually, I think she could let it come across her body even yeah. more so that then she can get more power and hit it, but she almost snatches at it, you know, and to not even hit the target there, she'll be disappointed with that. Do you think she felt under pressure of the two defenders coming? Potentially, so yeah, really absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Probably saw out the corner of her eye that defender coming. Yeah. Um, it was going to be from wide areas. Taylor Hines with a, a great cross that 
created Liverpool's goal. Yeah, the one yeah. moment in the game in 90 minutes, you know, that you put a half decent cross into the ball. And again, the substitutions have an impact, a lovely ball out wide. And this is a great first time cross here by Taylor Hines. And, and this is what Sophie Hall does, does best. You know, I've only seen her play a few games, but she's good in the air and she's brave. And this is a brave header here because any other striker sees potentially the goalie come in and might actually bottle it. But she throws her head at that and it was well deserved. And it was a really good reaction there. And she'll be full of confidence now. That's two goals in two obviously got nominated for player of the month so let's hope that that form continues for her yeah it was that tremendous noise yeah. when it went in i think well. that timing of our run was perfect because she just went across the player and it she just got the head on the end of it which is goals are goals yeah we were hoping liverpool were going to go on from strength to strength and, and get the win from there it was a big decision that you make may the other week to replace his his goalkeeper again and her stripes today with a, a wonderful save that kept yeah. it at 1-1 yeah, our position and playing in and around the boxes was great, especially for when they've had that goal. A yard out, it would have went in. Yeah, this was a big chance for them, wasn't yeah, it? You 100%. see here, the cross comes in and first two in. You see Gemma Bond just gets caught off here. What a yeah. strike that is. It's powerful. Yeah. But her reaction to stay up big, you know, she didn't go yeah. down to ground. She made herself big here. And, and then credit to actually Taylor Hines then to actually get to the second balls because you can see it falls there and that could be a tap in. She just adjusted her uh, position, didn't she? So as our balls play across there, you can see her now just coming across. Filling that gap. Yeah, brave. She'll be happy with that. She'll be yeah. disappointed that she hasn't got a clean sheet, but there's not much she could have done about that goal. Mm -hmm. But look, when yeah. she was called upon, you know, she did what she had to do. Really stepping on in the final stages of the game to try and get that when we thought it was going to come when the ball goes up and it's a, a seven minutes. Um, Missy Bo Kearns coming very close to uh, to getting all three points. I feel so sorry for Missy Bo this season. You know, she's had so many chances and efforts on goal, but either the keeper comes up with big saves or, you know, it just hasn't gone for her so far this season with regards to in front of goal. But this is a great Great effort by the way you know to even look to take a shot on from that distance just shows that she's not short of confidence still but credit to Olivia Clark you know the world's number one keeper you know to have that concentration to stay switched on and she's kept her team in it there that's a great save isn't it yeah, to tip it over save. there and for for ball she's just had a little touch had a little look up and she's went for it and it could have been a goal yeah, yeah inches yeah inches how inches. do they react from this now Paul, as, as you mentioned in the, the you know the, the talk afterwards, there's no divine right that you have a fortress like this where teams will come and lie down for you. Yeah, I think for the for the squad uh, that you're starting with, the late the starting eleven, I think they'll be knocking on the substitutes will be knocking on the door and saying, well, mm. what can I do to get in? Because we've drawn, drawn with Bristol. Is anything I could do? Anything I need to do? And that's where you go through the clips with the players at one to ones, and you'll see, well, this is can you do this? Or can you do that? It might be the case of just a little information, but that little information makes a massive difference. I think it's hard as well when the team's winning yeah. to then make changes. But now that actually they've had a draw against the bottom of the table team and potentially first half the performance wasn't good, there's no reason now why those subs shouldn't be starting come the next game on Wednesday or in the next league game against... You know, it's going to be uh, really interesting for Matt Beard. The schedule makes it very difficult, doesn't it? You, you mentioned Fuka there before. You think about the travel involved in playing international football, coming back, playing these games back to back it's it's quite difficult for a manager to to, to manage all of this period now over Christmas isn't it's it? a nightmare you know it's probably the one thing last season that I didn't enjoy was the scheduling you know you'd build momentum you'd have a run of games then you'd have a, a big period off you know f get, getting fans to come to the games it has a massive knock-on effect injuries come from that the stop start mm. so I think this is probably why actually the Conti Cup games have been good for Matt Beer because the players that haven't been playing a lot get minutes on Wednesday and, and you keep their fitness and their match fitness and the sharpness up so that actually when they are called upon come the WSL games, they'll be ready to go. Difficult period this for a manager, Paul? Uh, what, for this game? Just the, the, the schedule in, oh, of schedules, games, international games. games. That's the same, it's a nightmare. You've got, you've got half the squad that are away, you've got the ones that are, are back. How do you cope with them? How do you inspire them to start, you know, a train but with intensity? And it's, it's getting that fine balance on it. And it has to be spot on. That's why you use your strength and condition, your uh, sports therapist, and all it's all the team coming together and make it make it work, and go through the specific sessions that you need out of it. Sometimes it, is it important? I mean, they're, they're very ambitious. You, you said that before, didn't they? They, they want to climb up yeah. the table. They want to be challenging the fourth place team to not be too tough on yourself tonight when it all kind of sinks in. 
Yes and no, <laughs> because I think that if you want to win trophies, you have to be perfect. Mm. You know, you look at when we won the league back to back, it was it was near perfection. And I think that that's what the likes of your Emma Hayes and Chelsea's have done for so many years. You know, you can't afford to drop points. So, you know, I think it's a good mentality that Matt Beard's got, especially at home at Prenton. We've made this our fortress. So ideally today, a point against Bristol just isn't good enough. You know, and if we are wanting to in the next two or three years, be competing for trophies, be at the top end of the table, then these games should be should be coming comfortable games for us so um you know i think it's it's good that he has those high standards you're gonna have to talk about something else tonight paul aren't you with him music or the old days <laughs> not football. i don't know what to do i don't know what to just go back to newcastle <laughs> <laughs> let's give you an update on what else has happened uh, around the wsl this uh, weekend as well uh, on saturday it was manchester city two aston villa one then earlier on today in that huge london derby uh, ending up arsenal four chelsea one at the top of the table brighton and leicester the uh, share of the spoils there 2-2 it finished and then uh, into the second half of West Ham against Everton uh, just gone 1-0 to Everton there and to wrap up the weekend Spurs against Manchester United later on this evening as well uh, so this is how the table looks right now with uh, currently uh, the games being played Arsenal have joined Chelsea on 22 points the Blues uh, stay top on goal difference City in third and Liverpool stay in fifth United uh, joint with them uh, on those 15 points at the moment as well Everton in the Conti Cup at Walton Hall Park. Uh, both sides unlikely to progress out of the group stages there as well, by the way. Neither side have picked up any points so far. However, it's a Merseyside derby. And the Reds haven't tasted victory uh, in one for six games back to May of uh, 2019 as well. Uh, that is us almost done from Prenton Park today. Uh, before we wrap up, just want to remind you uh, about the, uh, the big uh, midweek that comes this way for not just Liverpool women, but also the men's as well. Reds five final great uh, game of the Conti Cup takes place on Wednesday, wrapping up with a trip to Walton Hall Park, taking on Everton, kicks off at 7pm. Both clubs uh, struggle, of course, in the competition as well. Steve will guide you through all of the action uh, from 5 to 7 on LFC TV Go and LFC Women's Social Channels. Uh, Becky Easton's going to be alongside him for that as well. And on Thursday, Jurgen Klopp's men sign off as winners of their group stage in Europa League and away tie with Belgian side Union SG. Bit of a dead rubber that one as well but action underway at quarter to six UK time and build up begins on match day live from 4.45 as well. Uh, stay warm and a massive thanks to uh, Tats and also to Paul McHugh making his debut on uh, the TV here tonight as well. He's uh, off to cheer up Matt Beard. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday night. Bye-bye.